Fox Sports welcomes you to a special Mother's Day edition of NASCAR from Darlington, South Carolina. Rain on Saturday night postponed the 500-mile race, the 11th race of the next Dell Cup season, but we're here today to bring it to you. Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers from the Hollywood Hotel. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Some of the drivers have their moms here to celebrate as That's well. Right. So the adjustment from what they thought would be a night race to a day race today. Oh, it's going to be a big challenge right now. All these guys have got to be really up on their game. I look for guys like Denny Hamlin, who won the other night. Greg Biffle, who's been winning here. They're really going to be really, I think, uh, up on their game, up on the wheel, and getting it done. Clint Boyer is on the pole. Jeff Gordon, a six-time winner here. Let's head down trackside for opening ceremonies. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and direct your attention to the American flag in turn four. And please remain standing as Harold King of Darlington Raceway delivers today's invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift our hearts and praise and adoration to you and to our mothers on this special day. We seek your blessings upon these loyal fans as they have waited patiently for another NASCAR experience. May you give divine and physical protection to our drivers and to peace to those that support them. And further, we lift up those that serve and sacrifice for our great nation. Give the leadership of our nation the clarity of mind as they give leadership to its people, because we ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Her song, Step Out in Faith, went to number two on the country Christian music charts back in December of 2006. From right here in our hometown of Darlington, please welcome Lisa Hudson as she performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we've watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the A unique opportunity to celebrate Mother's Day here in Darlington, South Carolina. Coming up, we have a developing story about Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the eight car as it relates to today's race. We'll have that for you. And the race, Grassroots Racing. It's NASCAR on Fox. We decide that it's time for us to move on and seek other opportunities. We weren't really close uh, with what we both had in mind. I'm disappointed, so I expect my fans to be disappointed. I feel strongly that I, I would have my father's blessing. What team I drive for next season, I don't know. We'll see what opportunities I have. Junior's a free agent at the end of the year. Darrell Waltrip spoke with him, parts of that interview throughout the race and today. And a story breaking right now. Let's head down to Steve Burns regarding the eight car and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Steve, what's the latest? Yeah, news item here on the eight car. Actually, yesterday, Chris, in pre-race inspection, uh, NASCAR didn't like the uh, mounting brackets between the race car and this wing. They made the DEI team of the eight car take these off and put new ones on. Uh, the premise was that it created an unfair aerodynamic advantage. And Jeff Hammond, they get to keep their 21st starting position, but there could be more news about this later on in the week.
Yes, Steve, I had a chance to talk to John Darby on Tuesday this coming week. I expect not only to have a fine, the guys are going to lose some points, but I really think Crew Chief Tony Uri Jr. is going to wind up being suspended, just like we saw some Crew Chiefs from, da from Daytona. He's going to wind up having a few weeks to think about this one. Junior currently 12th in points, so the crazy week continues. His announcement free agent at the end of the year. You have some thoughts on which race team will land him? Give us a give us a checkpoint. Of well, I know I had an opportunity to talk to some of the crew members on different teams, and particularly the Gibbs group, and they would love to have him over there. They think he'd be a nice fit, obviously, RCR because of the heritage, but also when you, you look on down further than that, Bobby Ginn made a, an announcement saying, hey, I want him at, at just about any cost. So I think he can pick and choose wherever he wants to go. He is in the driver's seat for right. sure. Roger Clemens got $28 million coming mm -hmm. back. He certainly will top that. What becomes of DEI? Uh, I think right now they're going to try to continue on. I think they've got a, uh, a desire to try to carry on Dale Earnhardt's desire, uh, you might say, thought process and work toward making that team a force to reckon with. I don't think they're going to go anywhere anytime soon, but it's going to be an uphill battle. And the Earnhardt name, of course, attached to that. Now, the the eight car belongs to DEI, or the number eight. Yep. Uh, now, Budweiser has said they'd like to go along with Chevy and Dale Earnhardt Jr., regardless of where he goes. I know he wants to stick with Chevy. He loves working with Budweiser, but there's a lot of rumors right now floating around that there's a new player on the block as far as the sponsor is concerned, and that could make things real interesting as far as the bidding war on that. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has not won at this track in Darlington. Uh, neither is Tony Stewart. Well, let's uh, head down to some of the moms of NASCAR, the grand marshals of this race, for the command. And now, race fans, in honor of Mother's Day, please welcome our very special Grand Marshals, the Nextel Cup moms, as they deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Sons and gentlemen, start your engines! And from all of us at Fox, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Let's head up to the play-by-play -play booth and Mike Joy. Mike, a historic track, the track with all the nicknames, too tough to tame, the lady in black. Might we see history today? Well, we'll certainly add to it, Chris, because this is NASCAR's most historic super speedway. We've raced here since 1950, but let's fast forward a couple of decades to 69-70, when giants roamed the earth, the big winged Dodge Daytonas and Plymouth Superbirds held sway on this narrow racetrack. So for the first time since that period, we're going to run winged cars at Darlington this afternoon. Hi, everybody, and I'll add Happy Mother's Day to everything you've heard as we get set to go. We would have loved to race Saturday night. We had time to race. We didn't have time to dry the track and go racing. No, we didn't, but hey, Mom, look. I got on my pink shirt. <laughs> I got on my new tie. And the only thing to be better than being here in Darlington, Mom, be home setting by you, holding your hand, kissing your pretty face. Happy Mother's Day to you, Stevie, all the moms out there. I can't be there with you. If I can't be there, you know where I'd rather be. Right here. <laughs> well, Going to see a great race today. You know who's got a tougher road? This gentleman's got to wish his wife happy his Mother's Day and happy birthday <laughs> yeah. today. We yeah. got a mom's birthday tomorrow, too. Go ahead. I'll tell you, we got a full plate, but we are here in Darlington, and I think the biggest thing we're going to see today is 500 miles at this treacherous racetrack. In practice and qualifying, we've already had 23 cars scrape the wall. Some cars did it two and three times. The biggest thing, race this racetrack, let the race wind down, and then see who's left to survive this thing. But I think the biggest thing we'll see is comers and goers. I think we have fast race cars that bobbled qualifying like Matt Kenseth, like Kyle Busch at the pack of the pack. And I think the big question and only a second start from the pole here at Darlington, can Clint Boyer keep that 07 car at the front? Well, we're about to find out on what is one of NASCAR's most narrow and certainly its most abrasive racing surface. What's it like out there? Let's get in the zone with the AutoZone Driving Zone and join DW for a spin around Darlington. All right, folks, get a couple laps here in the Roush Fenway Ford Fusion. First lap to run around this joint in a long time. She pushes up. We've seen that all day long. Heads for the wall. Got to hold her down, folks. Got to be sure and hold her down off turn four. This track is rough. Oh, my gosh, it's got bumpy. I'm sure glad you're going to replay it. The old crossover move right down here. You hold that car on the inside as long as you can. Then you let him go, and then you turn under him. Then you run the bottom, and you clear up. You go up in front of him, take his line away make a great pass. You gotta always be thinking ahead. This track is very treacherous. I gotta be careful of this baby, folks. It's in my car. Love to Jack Roush. I don't want the wrath of the cat in the hat on me, so I'm 
bringing her in before I get too careless, too reckless. And I will if you leave me out here long enough. That gets you in the zone with AutoZone, and today, as Larry pointed out, a green racetrack for these 43 drivers to deal with. They'll be led to the green flag by Clint Boyer, a first-time pole winner, the eighth time that's happened at Darlington, as Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR, proud sponsor of the Budweiser Pole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at each Nextel Cup race. Clint Boyer is the latest eligible driver for the Budweiser shootout of 2008 in Daytona. We're ready to race in Darlington, South Carolina. We are two laps from a start here in Darlington. This week, Rocky Battenfield of Muskogee asks, why has Hendrick Motorsports dominated all the new car races this year? That's our FedEx racetracks question. Same reason they've dominated even with the O car. The fact that Rick Hendrick has done an awesome job of having that group work together as a unit on his car. And the biggest thing, they communicate with each other. Well, let's see how Clint Boyer likes his new car. Hey, uh, Clint Boyer, it's your campaign manager, DW, here. Uh, what's our slogan, buddy? 707, baby. Hey, you can make our campaign a success. You win this race today. Uh, what's your chances, bud? How you feeling? I feel pretty good sitting up here right now. Uh, you know, this is the best seat in the house right now. But, uh, you know, we got our work cut out for us. I think it's going to be a long race. We're going to have to work on this long run. Gil and everybody in the Jack Daniel Chevrolet, they got me up front here, so now it's up to me to stay up here. Roger that. About half of the two-thirds of these races are won from up here where you are. So stand on it, bud. It's your day. All right, guys. Thank you. Now, the campaign is the fans will vote one driver in to the Nextel All-Star Challenge in Charlotte next week. Let's look at our keys to the race. Now, DW, I'm going to put a lot on the driver's shoulder here. we got to get your car right, but don't overdrive this new car, especially at this place that does not have a lot of grip. Give and take all day long on pit road, on the racetrack. It's what will get you to the end of this race. And never, ever, ever let your guard down. If you do, the old lady will reach out there and get you. Favorite word, anticipation. you got to anticipate everything that happens here. On pit road, on the racetrack, wherever you go, anticipate. It's a cloudy day in Darlington, heavy clouds, and we did see a drop or two out of the sky. It's only 68 degrees and just a light breeze, but there's nothing on the weather radar. But what's significant is that track temperature you see there, 84 degrees. This place has no grip in 30 degree weather. So obviously the cooler that the track is, it will help these cars from sliding around as much as when it's hot. Now NASCAR has announced they will throw a competition caution at lap 40 for teams to be able to check tire wear and check over their cars with this now being a green racetrack from last night's rain. There you see 367 laps, 500 miles, pit road speed, a long pit road here, 45 miles per hour, pit window for fuel, cross it out because you're going on tires well before 55 to 60 laps and with that competition caution, Mike, at lap 40. Now one thing about the competition yellow, you're not allowed to add fuel until then. We anticipate there will be cautions before lap 40, but no fueling until the competition yellow. History tells me it could get right exciting on this start. And this is a track where history prevails. Down the back straightaway, which when this track was built in 1950, was the front straightaway with its long covered grandstand that shielded folks from the rain, but not from the noise. And there's a look at the small end of the racetrack. On the left of your screen, the big end is turns one and two, as the turns have a very different radius. The track is egg-shaped. And we're ready to go with the Dodge Avenger 500. Nice crowd here for a rain-out day. They're ready to race. CW 500 miles, 170 miles an hour around this place. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Now, Lady in Black, be nice to my driver buddies today. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. Jumped from ninth to eighth. Dale Jr. three wide down the straightaway. You saw that move as he tucks in 
behind Johnny Sauter. They've done something they couldn't do Saturday. They all made a lap and nobody hit the wall. <laughs> But I think these guys know if you want to get some positions, you need to do it while you have fresh tires because these things are going to start sliding around. Jeff Gordon coming as uh, Kenny Schrader up on the high side. Gordon could not make the pass. Wisely backs out of it. He'll wait and try again. Every car goes through a cycle. You'll have optimum grip. You'll have maximum grip at some point in time during your run. Some early, some late. Ooh. But when it is getting the grip like these guys are right now, you got to take advantage of it. Or Casey Mears did not have the grip on the bottom, but he got it straightened out and repassed Harvick. Jimmy Johnson right of your screen and the low Chevy moving up against Schrader's 21. Darrell, when the track has been washed a clean of rubber by a hard rain overnight, how do you know? What do you expect on the first couple of laps? Unlike a lot of racetracks, I think that's a good thing here. We're in the sand hills. A lot of sand on the racetrack, a lot of dirt. And I think this track actually is better right now, clean, than it will be later on. Not always the case, Mike, but here I think that's the exception. You know, Mike, we talked about comers and goers, and I was concerned about the 78 car, Kenny Wallace. He started up there in the sixth position, hit the wall hard in qualifying coming off turn four. This is a single car operation. They lease space from Ginn Motorsports. They operate out of Denver, Colorado. And you know what, for the most part, in these first four or five laps, Kenny is holding his ground. That he is as Greg Biffle challenges for the lead off turn four. I think that uh, Biffle going for the lead right now, that's bad news for these guys. He's won the last two races here, and he loves this racetrack. And they're starting to get their act together with this new car. They told us that they were a little behind with this new car, that they wasn't where they need to be, but they felt like they could get there in a hurry. Had a great run at Richmond last week with it. He could set a record today for Ford if he can get out front. Because they've only led four laps this year. All by Matt Kenseth. <laughs> All by Matt Kenseth. In the new car. Fords have led other races, but in the new car, only four laps. In his last two wins, Biffle has also led the most laps. He's led nearly half the race both of the last two years. All right, let's get some late breaking stories from Pitt Road. Let's start with Matt Yoakum. Before Clint Boyer had already completed lap one, his spotter, Mike Dillon, said tire management. When you ask Clint, he said the biggest lesson he learned, it's not about setting the fast lap, it's about being patient and consistent. And that's the biggest lesson he's learned. And that's why he feels like the 07 is going to be strong in 07. And meanwhile, he's trying to become the 10th different driver to score his first pole and win in the same weekend. And Chris, the last time that happened, DW. He was 17 years old, and Lyndon Johnson was the president. Well, Matt, it's Mother's Day, and the crew member in the most trouble with his wife for missing this day has got to be Greg Biffle's mechanic, Ryan Dextrays. That's because his wife, Nicole, is pregnant with their second child and is due, well, now, today. He has his cell phone with him. He is expecting a text message from her at any moment, and if he gets that call, then his own race begins, the race to the delivery room two hours away. Dick Bergeron. Mark Martin is going to be a lot of fun to watch today. He had a terrible qualifying run, so he took the green flag in the 37th position. The crew has torn the car apart, and they are confident that they have a car now that is capable of going to the front. They know. <laughs> 1,740 laps, and he's won nine. Thanks, Dick. You see Montoya get a little squirrely there. You'll see a lot of that today. Darrell, we've only raced nine laps, and the race pace has dropped off a full second a lap from laps one and two. Yeah, I mean, we'll be running in the 32s and eventually the 33s. It would not surprise me before this day's over that the cars will be slowed down into the 34-second bracket. It's 48 car, Jimmy Johnson. He just drives by Kevin Harvick. That was a battle for eighth. Definitely Jimmy Johnson, a two-time winner here. Looks like Chad Canals Net Group, they've got this car dialed in today. The famed characteristic of this track is the Darlington Stripe. You get it when the rear quarter of the car gets up against the wall and you slide along it when you just plain run out of racing room. We saw it 23 times in. Jamie McMurray struggle to get off the corner. 
and he's got one first of the day. And, and you know what? That doesn't hurt a thing. Uh, these cars can take those little scrapes like that and keep on going. As long as you don't get in it and stay in it, you're okay. Greg Biffle coming under fire from the 99, his Roush Fenway Ford teammate, Carl Edwards. And it wasn't just a lap and a half ago, Greg Biffle was all over the rear bumper of Clint Boyer in the 07, but lost a little ground there on that lap. This is such a momentum racetrack. Staying in the throttle, keeping the car moving, particularly off of turn two. If you have to get out of the throttle, push up, you're going to lose a lot of time. Traffic is, in, it really can slow you down when you get in traffic here. I'll tell you a car I see moving into the equation behind Greg Biffle and Carl Edwards is O engine, engine number. Number nine, Casey Kane, certainly trying to get their season turned around. Only one top ten finish. Has felt good about this Dodge all weekend long here, though. I'm really impressed with the patience shown by several drivers that normally don't have a lot of that in reserve. The five of Kyle Busch pulled up on Paul Menard in turn two. He really had a run on Menard. Got right to his rear bumper. Jammed on the brake, got out of the throttle and said, all right, I'll wait. I'll get him in three and four, and he did. There's only certain places you can pass on this racetrack. You really have to think ahead here. I, I know I said anticipate, and that's what you have to do. I have let up in the middle of the straightaway, so I won't catch a guy going in the corner, but catch him coming off the corner. I'm afraid our second place man just a second ago, Greg Biffle in that 16 car, I believe his car is starting to go away. He just lost a position to his teammate Carl Edwards in the 99, and now it looks like the nine car is going to get by him. 14 laps into this run, 16 starting to go backwards, Biffle. Let's see if his right side is scraped up. He got really close to the wall in the three and four, and I think that's one of the reasons why he's falling back. You know, Daryl, I talked about it at the top of the show. You know, 23 cars hitting the wall, scraping the wall during practice and qualifying. For the most part, other than straightening some panels out and re-decaling it, not a lot of work. And I think that's a big tribute to this current car with that big mass of dowel foam in the right side. It helps the car keep its shape even when you scrape the wall. It's all you really want to do. It doesn't always do a lot of chassis damage, but it always does body damage. So if you can hold that sheet metal out and it doesn't rub on the tires, you can keep on going. Slip sliding around Darlington. This looks like a lot of fun. It looks like how stock car racing used to be. Clint Boyers led every lap so far. The Dodge Avenger 500 on Fox is sponsored by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By the auto parts experts at AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. By Nextel, only from Sprint, helping NASCAR Nextel Cup fans get more done. And by Subway Restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. Carl Edwards in the Office Depot Ford is your new leader. This happened on lap 17. We're now at lap 21. As Boyer eased it into the corner, Edwards went on by. Also, while we were away, Ricky Rudd made a pit stop for overheating. And you saw Clint in the uh, 07 car. He let the uh, 99 of Carl Edwards go. He knows he doesn't want to hold him up. Man, the last thing you want to do is have somebody ride in your bumper here. Give and take early. Give up and take. <laughs> David Rudiman has had a rough ride so far in his Domino's Camry. And as Dale Jr. draws a bead on Kenny Wallace, this will be for 11th place. You're watching from Rudiman back at Matt Kenseth. Now watching poor, battle Kyle Busch here. But David's already been in the wall pretty hard down in, in the middle of the corner. Comes off the corner, the car just kind of wanders over into, into Kyle Busch. And Kyle's right side was all uh, scraped up. Side, five car inside. Inside, got a follower coming with 18. Inside, inside, still there, clear behind 18. 14 coming hard, all clear. Third place, Denny Hamlin on the move. You know, we talk about Denny Hamlin, that 11 car, all the time. It's almost like the more challenging the racetrack is, the better he prevails. Just look at the places he has success. Pocono, the Mexico City road course, and of course he made his very first start for Joe Gibbs Racing in a Bush car here a few years ago and ended up finishing in the top ten in his debut with those guys. You know what, those first, uh, not, not the nine car, but I don't think he was in the Bush race Friday night, but Hamlin, who won the Bush race Friday night, right behind him, uh, Clint Boyer was fifth in the race Friday night. And uh, who else is up there? Carl Edwards was second in the Bush race. So laps around this joint pay off. 
And this is a new tire that Goodyear has brought new here. Tire. So if nothing else, it gave him a feel for that tire in that race Friday night. Jeff Gordon is the next Tell Cup point leader. Right now he's running in ninth place, Steve. Mike, he's done a great job with this new race car with the wing on back. He's finished third, second, first, and fourth. But right now, Mike, he is really struggling. He's telling crew chief Steve Latart, I'm sideways loose, and I feel like I'm spinning out every lap. Steve said, hang on for that competition caution on lap 40. Well, he, he looks like most of the field if he's half sideways and about spinning out. I, I, that's the thing we constantly hear the, in these uh, new car races is how uncomfortable and how unhappy the drivers are, even though they may be leading the race or running in the top five or ten. They complain about the car constantly. That's where that spotter and that crew chief, they have to be a pretty good salesman. I know you're sliding around, but you're not sliding quite as much as some of your competitors. That's right. It's not how good you are. It's how good you are compared to everybody else. Pole sitter Clint Boyer has fallen to third, and he's about to lose that position to Casey Kane. What's up, Matt? Well, he's been describing to his spotter, Mike Dillon, and also to his team exactly how this 07 is handling his biggest issue. He says just not rotating like he should, which means now he's getting beat up off of turn two, and that's where he's lost the lead and second place. He's about to fall into the clutches mad of Casey Kane and Jimmy Johnson, but I'll tell you, maybe one of the fastest cars on the racetrack right now, because right now our leader, Carl Edwards, running 32-64. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just drove by Jeff Gordon in the 24 for ninth. He's running 32-20s right now. Man, I got all nervous. I thought something bad had happened when he went by here and he gets by Gordon coming down the front. He comes off four here and makes a pass. You can see Jeff just pulls over and says, go ahead, you're faster than I am. Look at all the people. They stood up and started screaming. I thought something bad happened. That's Junior Nation, man. Little did I know something good had happened. But, guys, you have to believe, with everything he's been through this week, and even what went on this morning, that Jeff Hammond and Steve Burns talked about the wing brackets, being caught with illegal wing brackets. This is the best therapy in the world for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that race car, but running good and running competitive. Every great driver I've ever known, adversity does not bother them once they get in their domain. They put their helmet on, they get behind the wheel, everything else goes away. They do their job. As soon as it's over with, maybe they go back to thinking about it, but not right now. And I think this is a great statement that this deal will not just fall apart. They're still going to try to win races and win a championship. And the D whole DEI organization is still committed to him, to Martin Truex, to Paul Menard and to uh, winning races and and growing that company. I believe our pole sitter Clint Boyer in that 07. I think he's looking forward to this competition caution here in about 10 laps because right now he's just about to lose a position. You can see how much quicker Jimmy Johnson in the 48 got back to the throttle. I just think it shows how careful everybody's being though knowing that 40 lap caution is coming up because we haven't had any really issues to create a caution before that. Matt. Ten laps can't come quick enough for Gil Martin's 07 team. He says, you've got to free me up. My biggest issue tight, and he's losing positions again. Top of your screen, Casey Kane was challenging Boyer, and now Kane has drifted back, back to sixth place. And just real quick, the only issue we've actually had on the racetrack, Ricky Rudd in that 88 car had to make an unscheduled stop running hot, had a piece of plastic over the front end open. And they may have told Casey, caution coming up, take it easy, chill. Nine laps to the competition yellow. I love to race. We have a new leader in the Dodge Avenger 500, Denny Hamlin. Got past Carl Edwards in lapped traffic. They're pulling up on Joe Nemechek. Wow. It, it, but that's Darlington at its finest. That is the smartest kind of racing you do here. Got a guy faster than you are, spotter says, let him go. Coming to the caution here in about two more laps, three. Just let him go. And the 07 fades a bit, Clint, Clint Boyer. Dale Jr. closes in. Our aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for the past 25 years. And that's another example of racing the track and not worrying about the competition. Not now. Now, there will come a time when they'll say, all bets are off, take the gloves off and go race, but not now. And we're about two laps away from what will be a competition caution. Trust me, all 39, 38 cars on the lead lap will be to pit road for four tires, fuel, and major adjustments for a lot of them. 
Kyle Petty's just gone one lap down, so he would be the car elig most eligible for the free pass at the moment. But he needs to stay close to Denny Hamlin until that yellow waves, because if Hamlin laps another car further up the line, that car would then be the free pass car. At one time, that red car coming down the back right there was almost a half a lap behind the leader. And right now, he sees the leader up ahead of him. Leader takes the caution flag. And this is the competition yellow that NASCAR <laughs> promised in the driver's meeting. So the teams could check things over on a green racetrack. And this has become a fairly common procedure in recent years when we have a rain out, as we did last week. And I'm pretty impressed that we ran 40 laps at the start of this race, a green racetrack. These cars have not been on the track uh, since Friday afternoon in final practice and, and pretty, pretty clean 40 laps. This tells me the boys haven't woken up yet. It's just kind of like Sunday and they know it's going to work today. And mama's home waiting, Mama, right? That's right. <laughs> Carl Edwards in the 99 has led more laps today than a Ford has led in all the previous races with the new car. He waved Denny Hamlin by, pulled over, let Hamlin go by to take the lead. As we get set for this first round of pit stops under the first caution of the day. As they peel off to pit lane, they'll be headed to the vicinity of Steve Burns at the west end of pit road. Steve. Mike Carl Edwards said early in this run that he was really trying to take care of his equipment, being conservative, but as the run went on, he got considerably looser. So they're going to make some air pressure adjustments on that 99, also make a track wire adjustment. Crew Chief Bob Osborne telling his crew chief, take, or his crew rather, take deep breaths and visualize. They're really working on their pit stops. Krista. Casey Kane's car was really good early, but he lost a couple of positions late in that run. The only thing he said about his car is loose. They plan to lower the track bar to tighten up his Avenger, also making a late call for Wedge. Matt Yoakum. Danny Hamlin looking strong to pull off the weekend sweep. He says the car is tight in the center and a little tight on initial throttle late exit, but not bad. Mike Ford going to try to improve this race leading race car with a slight air pressure adjustment on the left side. And here's the battle off Hero Dick. Well, Jamie McMurray started in the third position at the drop of the green, but he has lost 15 positions since. The car he describes as way, way loose. So the crew has made major chassis adjustments to try and tighten him up a little bit. Larry Mack, you called it right. Big changes on this first pit stop. Well, the biggest change that 07 had on that pit stop, look at right there. Gained four positions, so the boy's getting it done on pit road. The Dodge Avenger 500 on Fox is sponsored by TGI Friday Restaurant's new right portion, right price menu. Give me more Fridays. By Napa Auto Parts. Napa, get the good stuff. By FedEx, every day is race day. And by State Farm, great service, great rates. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Welcome back to Darlington. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, sorry, we'll tell you in a minute. Uh, 49 cars came to run this race, and that meant six failed to qualify. Ward Burton, Scott Riggs, Jeremy Mayfield, Dale Jarrett missed the show along with his teammate Michael Waltrip and Mike Bliss were the drivers not quick enough to make the 43-car field. Daryl was looking down at Junior Nation. You got to tell him. Well, guy picks his, pulls his T-shirt up, and then on the hair in his chest, he got a big eight mode right in there. <laughs> so, in other words, in about eight months, his wife's going to say, he changed his number, he changed his number. <laughs> From our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam, let's get the restart. Denny Hamlin, your leader. That's Joe Nemechek on the inside. Lap cars include Nemechek, Robbie Gordon, and Ricky Rudd. singular virtual crew chief question it's the obvious one where will Dale Earnhardt Jr. end up in 2008 a for Richard Childress Racing B for Joe Gibbs C for Hendrick Motorsports 
D for anybody else. To answer, text the word CREW to 191 on your AT&T Singular wireless phone. Singular is the new AT&T. That should prove interesting. It should. I, I hate to keep leaving out for himself because that's a viable option. It is, but Dale Jr. said in the press conference, he said, if nothing else works out, we can run the team out of Junior Motorsports. Yeah, I mean, he, and would. he told me that. He doesn't want to, but he could. Tony Stewart has climbed up into the top 10. Smoke started 26th, but he was picking them off very steadily before the competition yellow. Goes right after Greg Biffle and goes on by. Yeah, his car is awesome right now, Mike. I mean, he can do things with that car I haven't seen anybody else do. High, low, he goes in on the apron, doesn't really have to use the slide job, just kind of drives on by. And he's working on uh, Jeff Gordon right now, and I think you'll see down here, he'll cut right under him, and uh, Jeff kind of knew that was coming, blocked him a little. This may be a line-sensitive racetrack, but Tony's never been a line-sensitive driver. He'll find places to run. No one else will go and make it work. Let me show you one reason NASCAR, I think, wanted to throw a competition caution. And trust me, Mike Ford, crew chief for Denny Hamlin, 11 cars glad. This is the inside of one of the right side tires. You can see right there, it started to, to chunk out. Part of that could be a little aggressive with the setup. Part of it could be a green racetrack. I'm sure they'll make adjustments and monitor that. A lot, though, could be it could go away once we get some rubber on the racetrack. One thing that the guy said after last week, they have to run so much negative camber in that right front to make these things turn that they were afraid of this. I don't know, what are they saying down there, Krista? Yeah, Darrell, we know tires always an issue here at Darlington. You're going to look at the tires here that came off of Casey Kane's number nine on that last stop. And a little bit of a slight blading issue on the right front, a little bit of cut on the right front tire. And maybe, Darrell, you can explain. Darrell or Larry, you can explain what that is looking down here at Casey's tire. Yeah, that graining, that comes from sliding. And that's one of the things that you get here. Car won't turn it, just not any grip. Grip creates slide. Slide makes the tires grain up. Watch the two of Kurt Busch side by side with Casey Kane in the nine. Oh, that's casual. Oh. Do you know what they need? They need a real estate agent. Why? Because they're fighting over the same real estate. Oh. <laughs> I know a good one. Danny, you listen. At your door inside, two's inside. No harm done. No, it didn't. That was really it was casual. Uh, that's that's the worst thing happens those two today. They'll be very fortunate. That won't even rile either one of them up. Well, how about teammates? Uh, Jamie McMurray was battling back there at 27 spot. Watch he and David Reagan. Now, the right side of Reagan's number six is all skinned up. Whoops. Whoa. The whole car was getting about ready to get skinned up right there. But you could certainly hear Jamie jump back out of the throttle to get off of him. Hopefully, he could get it straightened up, and he did. And, and it's so easy to do that here because if you're coming off the corner and the car starts to take off, you got to lift a little. The guy behind you has got to run, and it could cause you a little problem. Well, we were talking about camber, and so are some of these drivers. Listen to what Jeff Gordon had to say. I'm feeling, I think, you know, we got a little bit too much camber or something in that right front. When I'm on the brakes and the front end's down, it cuts too good. When I'm not, you know, it, it, it's, it's a little tight. Or actually, we put a little air in the right front to try to make it not so sensitive on the brakes. Let me know if that helps it or not. When he puts the brakes on, the front goes down, and as the front travels down, it increases the camber, which puts more camber in it. And so what he's saying is, and that edge of that tire is like a knife. It digs into the racetrack, and it'll make the car cut, but too much, and you'll tear the tire up. And I just real quickly want to explain about camber. We run negative in the right front, which means you lean the top of the tire in toward the inside of the car. We run positive in the left front, you lean it out. The more you put in the right front or left front, especially the right front, it just helps the car turn. Fighting for 17th in this pack. That's where the 14 of Sterling Marlin is. And a good bit of bump and run all the way through. 
Yeah, that's just Darlington right there. You get kind of one guy, I think Robbie Gordon up there in the front of this crowd, is kind of holding everybody up, and you get backed up behind a guy, and it just creates this bottleneck. Can't anybody go because you're on off the throttle, can't get up enough momentum to get by. You know, a car I've also been watching closely, we talked about Kurt Busch a while ago in the two car, his teammate, Ryan Newman in the 12, he had a fast race car all during practice on Friday. He went ahead and tried to get a little more on lap two of qualifying and hit the wall. I read his quotes, he said, not a smart move to try to run that second lap. He smacked the wall. He started all the way back in the 29th position. He just cracked the top 10. Looks like he's backing up how he was in practice on Friday. Jeff Gordon just in front of Newman in ninth. Gordon ten and a half seconds off the lead. In front of him, Tony Stewart. And in front of him in seventh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Closing down on Kevin Harvick, Steve. And Mike, when the competition caution came out, Dale Earnhardt Jr. said, man, this old race car is good. I've got great forward bite. They didn't make any changes, believe it or not, to the eight car. And Jeff Gordon told his crew, hey, after ten laps, that eight car is spectacular. And I would say so, Steve, because he's definitely been picking them up and laying them down since the drop of the green flag. Here's the 11 car at the line now, and Dale Jr., even as good as he's running, is just coming off a of turn four. So it just shows you what being out front here will do for you, man. You can put, you can run off and leave everybody when you get in clean, clean air, no traffic. Darrell, you talked about guys that ran the Bush race on Friday night. Let's talk about Kyle Bush here in the five car. He started all the way back in the 36th position. He's up in 12th. He didn't run the Bush race on Friday night. I think he learned more by not running it because the man that raced his Bush car on Friday night, Mark Martin. Kyle Bush was on that pit box. Mark ran in the top five. I bet you he learned more than if he was driving it, actually, Dick. Well, he's had an interesting, interesting situation with this new car, Larry. Uh, Kyle Busch has just not been able to figure out how to qualify with it. He is timed in 14th, 20th, 24th, 34th, 36th. Terrible, terrible qualifying runs. But he sure knows how to go fast when the green flag drops. So far, with the new cars, he has finished first, second, fourth, seventh. And today, so far, he's gone from 36th to 12th. And he just keyed the radio to tell the crew, nice job of the car boys he's going to the front Daryl don't you think that's a product though we talked about it in our keys to the race with this with this new car he overdrives his car qualifying which you can get by with on the old car young and exuberant you know sometimes that's great but uh, you got to finesse it too and that's probably one of the things he needs to work on is finesse but you know when you're going down the interstate and there's a slow car in the fast lane and it backs everybody up you mean like this <laughs> Robbie Gordon, who has been in the fence pretty hard uh, in the seven car up here, he has had these guys backed up. He is in the preferred line, running just good enough to hold people up, and it's, it's been a wad right behind him. But look at the six. David Reagan did a very smart thing. Got way back off of Gordon, got a run out of turn two, and beat him down the straightaway. That's what I was telling you, Mike. You have to anticipate where you're going to catch people so you can figure out where you can pass people. You can't just pass them at will. A big pack of cars and the leaders are coming. We've completed 61 of 367 laps in Darlington County. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Denny Hamlin from Chesterfield, Virginia, driving the number 11 FedEx Chevy. Hey, race fans. You grab the bud, I'll grab the trophy. NASCAR on Fox, we're glad to have you watching the Dodge Avenger 500 from Darlington, South Carolina. Rain postponing the race last night. We're on for today. And your leader, Denny Hamlin, who has led 30-plus laps, the most of any driver. We've had three different leaders and a couple of lead changes. The track known as the Lady in Black of the Darlington Stripe. At least six drivers have scraped the wall, just like Jamie McMurray did there so far, unofficially keeping count. And when you talk about drivers driving the racetrack, Carl Edwards, who has led 18 laps, working his way to the front, and then allowing Denny Hamlin to go by him, not to create 
any problems. And that's pretty much been the story of three different leaders as Hamlin leads currently right now. Let's check back in on Clint Boyer with Matt Yoakum. Chris, Clint Boyer led 16 laps early, but then a combo platter of issues. First, the car was tight, so he burned off the front tires, losing all that grip on his pit stop. They made an air pressure and track bar change to try to free it up, but his other issue was the car was running extremely hot, the water temperature climbing. His spotter said he had a tear-off on the grill. By the time he pitted on lap 41, the tear-off was gone, but crew member Eric Pringle, the tire carrier, went to clean the grill and found it was packed with a bunch of leaves. And Jeff Hammond, who's over at the Ford Cutaway Car, will tell you, Jeff, that one nuance of this new car, we've seen a lot of issues with the, green, with the screen. Yeah, Matt, we have. And again, when you take a look at the front nose of this car, the way the splitter is made, you can see here real quickly, here's a tear-off and what can happen. It gets trapped actually up in this area of the nose and blocks all the air ducts off. Here's where the screen, where you take air in, right in this area of the car. Now, the other part you got to worry about, you talked about the leads, how it can get trapped in there. But this racetrack is very abusive. This is what the asphalt looks like. This is the way it looks like it's washed, uh, like a green crack we were talking about earlier. As the rubber wears off, it'll start covering these stones. But when it does that, it creates these real fine particles. And those fine particles will go through that screen. And it, what you hope to have happen is that the inside, you got to shake the screen just like this. And what it does, it catches it. And as it vibrates, it's kind of like a self-cleaning situation. It's in behind the big front nose of the car, but before the radiator. That's what will keep the stuff out of your radiator and keep you from overheating. Overheating is always a problem here in Darlington. And it's the number one thing, Larry McReynolds, when you get here, you better be prepared for it. Well, I think this right here tells the tale, Jeff. We're looking at one of our cameras down low, one of our robo cams. You see all this rubber. That's where it's going. It's just going up in the air. It's on our camera lens, and it's getting on the front of these race cars. And that old shaker screen, that's an old dirt track trick. That's, that's what dirt track racers would put in their radiator inlet. At 73 laps, Denny Hamlin, the race leader, coming up on David Gilliland. Now, he has a 2.2-second lead on Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy's just cleared a whole pack of lap traffic. But Hamlin, for Thursday night, or Friday night here, rather, led more than half the race on the way to winning the Bush Series race from the pole. We've been watching Ryan Newman in the 12 come up through. And now he gets to where the going's a little tougher. He's battling uh, Dale Jr. for seventh place. And I've been watching Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. He's actually starting to lose a little bit of ground. It was just a few laps ago that Tony Stewart in that 20 car drove by Dale Earnhardt Jr. I've seen that happen here a lot. They start to race on the green racetrack, and your car is unbelievably fast. As soon as it gets rubber on it, gets a little buildup on the surface. Cars all of a sudden need some sort of adjustment. So they haven't made any changes in the car. I bet they'll have to do that next time in. Are they, what, are you, what are you finding out, Krista? Yeah, this is a great run for Tony Stewart at this track. I talked to his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, this weekend. He said this is one of the few places that frustrates the team. No matter what they do, they can't seem to give Tony exactly what he needs at this track. And 14 starts, Tony has just two top fives at Darlington. But this last radio communication, he told the team, guys, it's not awful. And in typical Tony Stewart fashion, that means it's okay right now. Yeah, this is a compromised racetrack. Ever since I've been coming here, I, you can get it right in one and two, it's wrong in three and four. You can get it right in three and four, it's wrong in one and two. So it's a compromise. You just try to get the best possible overall package that you can get. He just had a pass for the second position. Carl Edwards in that 99 car, he just drove by Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Not only did he drive by him, Steve, but he's pulling away as well. Larry, what's surprising about that is, is crew chief Bob Osborne keeps telling Carl, take it easy on your equipment. Carl really trying to be conservative. And uh, Daryl, I'm curious, yesterday his crew chief Bob Osborne said, you know, we make, this is a scary racetrack. We make the car and the driver do things here that we don't do anywhere else. What would be an example of that? Well, it's exactly what I was talking about, Steve. Here, you want to drive, anywhere else you tell a driver to get up on the wheel, get after it. Here you tell a driver, take it easy, don't worry about the competition, just take care of your car. And that's a whole new meaning here versus anywhere else you go. So here you got to put a bit in his mouth and you got to hold him back. 
until the time's right. I love your philosophy. Don't give me 110% here. Maybe just give me 90. 90 we'll just fine. 90 for now. Don't jump the fence. <laughs> Carl Edwards has led more laps today than a Ford has led in the previous races with the new car combined. Remember what I told you, I think it was yesterday in our, or, uh, Friday in our practice show. Run all day, don't knock the fence down, and I guarantee you, you'll come up with a top 10 finish. That's the recipe for Darlington, 79 laps complete. Denny Hamlin leads Carl Edwards by two and a half seconds with pit stops coming up in about 15 laps. There's your race leader. Thursday, Dale Earnhardt Jr. declared free agency. He's going to look for a new team to drive for beginning in 2008. And Thursday afternoon, Darrell Waltrip sat down with Jr. I mean, everybody talks about Childers. Would you like to do a deal with Richard? Uh, would you like to do a deal with Henry? Or would you like to do a deal with somebody like a Bobby Ginn that just showed up all of yeah. a sudden? What's going to make you want to do a deal with someone? There's positives and negatives to every scenario. What's really easy to do is go, all right, well, these guys run good. Yeah. You know? Like Henry. Right. Yeah. Um, Richard's turned his deal uh, around the last couple of years, and they've really improved. I mean, there's, there's, you know, and you see where Richard's team's going and going and moving up there. You know, they put cars in the top ten every week. I need to go see, talk to these individuals. I need to go see shops, see resources, meet employees, and talk to the drivers and see what the interest is in them having me as a teammate. So what did you folks say in our singular AT&T wireless question? Where will Junior drive next year? 58% of you would like to see him in the number three at Richard Childress Racing, for which his father, Dale Earnhardt, won six NASCAR championships. Makes a lot of sense. I don't know that it's the right place, but, you know, he's got a lot of opportunity here, and he's going to take his time. He's not going to rush into anything. Well, we may hear Junior's comments about the black number three that his dad made famous a little later on in this race. Right now, he's running in eighth place behind Hamlin, Edwards, Jimmy Johnson, Casey Mears, and Tony Stewart, your top five. Now, here's the situation I'd like to set up. We're 88 laps into this race. We've already went a few laps further than we did before that competition caution on lap 40. I can't help but think of some of the tires that we saw, especially like one of the right side tires off of Denny Hamlin, our leader. But right now, we're about 10 to 12 laps before I think these green flag stops will, will start taking place. One of the things that's happened to the track, remember we said it was green when we started, no rubber, it's just a green track. Now the track's rubbered up. Need to make some adjustments. We have comers and goers now. Pit stops coming in about eight or nine laps. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Matt Kenseth, first of the lead lap cars to pit, described his car as, well, very loose, to paraphrase. Terribly loose. Denny Hamlin has now led 60 laps after dominating and winning the Bush Series race here Friday night. Jimmy Johnson has scraped it up coming off the corner here. Have a look. He's the third car back in your picture. Got it with both ends, front yeah. and back. That's... Matt, is his car okay? Well... You really haven't said a whole lot about it. Stevie Reeves, the spotter, notified the team, and I think the only other person besides Chad Canals was a little worried about that would be the guys who paint the walls here at Darlington. Terry Morris and his staff, 15 to 20 gallons of paint on Friday night. Chad Canals looking at making a small air pressure change. The car is tighter now, but Jimmy's still complaining. He needs forward bite and needs it bad. Casey Kane is in, Elliot Sadler, David Stremme. On pit road, David Gilliland, Jeff Green, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kristen. Casey Kane says his car has lost its ability to turn. The right rear is way too loose. They've taken a half rubber out of the right rear. Steve. Dale Earnhardt Jr. didn't make any adjustments to that Chevrolet on his last stop, Krista, but they want an air pressure adjustment here. Jr. said it got real loose, and he lost that forward bite he was bragging about. 
David Rudiman, Reed Sorensen in along with Jamie McMurray. Here comes the 07 on pit road, guys. These are all scheduled green flag pit stops. And I can't help but stress enough, this is other than maybe Dover, Delaware, this is one of the trickiest pit roads to get on because that apron in three and four is absolutely like ice, it very is. slick. And it's ice protected by a barrier right there to that wall with a bunch of water in it. Tony Raines, Kyle Petty, Clint Boyer, the pole sitter, and Kevin Harvick in the pit lane along with Carl Edwards. Pat? And Boyer complaining that still he has that tight condition. Remember, he burned off the front. He was pushing so bad on the first run. Going definitely for an air pressure change. You can see the crew member putting the wrench in the back window for a chassis adjustment. Steve? Carl Edwards says his car is real good in one and two. Just a little loose getting into three. They took a half a pound of air on the left rear tire. Carl Edwards sounds confident today. Jeff Gordon, Kyle Bush, Mark Martin, J.J. Yaley in along with Ken Schrader, Brian Vickers. Here's Dick. And Kyle Bush has right front damage to his car, Mike. One of the mechanics just grabbed a fender and tried to pull it out, but it may well need more than that. The car, arrow tight, had been perfect earlier. Jeff Burton, Dave Blaney, Juan Pablo Montoya in. Casey Mears comes in. Kenny Wallace. And Mike, you made note earlier in the race how much tires give up. This is one of those racetracks. As much as you'd like to stretch it as far as you can, hopefully trap these guys by caution. Just remember, you stay out there, you're giving up a second and a half to two seconds a lap to those guys on fresh tires. Ryan Newman in, Dick. Yeah, and he is having one of the best days he has had all year long. They tried to put a piece of tape on the grill of Ryan Newman's car. They weren't even close to being able to get it on, but he had worked his way up to sixth position before the car, uh, before everybody started to piss. Uh, Krista. Tony Stewart also having pretty much the run of his life here at Darlington. His best finish here is fourth. He's currently third. They stayed out one lap longer than they wanted to, finally bringing the Home Depot Chevrolet down to make the adjustments on Tony's car. You see the wrench in the back, the four tires, and they said to just watch your entry into pit road, Smoke. Yeah, Christy, you know why they're telling him that? Because he just about wrecked getting on pit road. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson's in, so is Kurt Busch, and here comes the race leader. Danny Hamlin, he's got a long way to go to get to his pit stall down pit road. If Jimmy Johnson pulls out, here's Matt. And Kurt Busch pulls away as Danny Hamlin pulls in. They pull the sprint rubber on the 48 of Johnson. Going to be making air pressure change on Denny Hamlin's 11 Chevrolet. Trying to pull off the sweep. Had a great night with the first series race on Friday night. Solid stop so far. A little bit of trouble on the left rear. Luck came off. 16.3 seconds, he is finally away. Now that's about three seconds he gave up to a lot of these guys on their pit stop right there with trouble on that left rear. And Larry, we were talking about how difficult this pit road is to get on. The safest way to get on this pit road is coming over on the third turn and ride the bottom. Watch the 11 here as he tries to get on pit road. Swings up high, got a car under him. That kind of messed him up right there. Spotter should have been giving him a heads up on that one, but you see how he's locking it up. He's outside that yellow line, which means the pit road is uh, over to his right or to his left. Now watch. Here's another one. Here's why they were telling Tony Stewart to watch his pit road entry. There's another guy down here beneath him. Watch this. That was almost disaster. And those barrels were coming up in a hurry on and the right side. you can side. see how much damage is on the side of that 48 car right there, too. But, Darrell, going back to Denny Hamlin, the 11, he waited way too late, I think, to commit down to pit road. But here comes Clint Boyer in the 07 with those fresh tires. Well, the, the longer you can stay up on that banking and cut down, the better your, your speed, the more time you're going to save. But it's a little bit treacherous, as we saw. So we've cycled through green flag pit stops for the first time today. And your new leader is Carl Edwards. Denny Hamlin, that slow stop of his, contributed to his now being 5.4 seconds behind the leader. Well, that and Denny Hamlin pitted three laps later than Carl Edwards. So you you have, you link that with the three seconds on the pit stop. It's almost a six-second lead now for Carl Edwards. And in the that's 99. another one of those things that the crew been, you know, tell Carl, Carl, take it easy. We're asking you to do things here. We don't ask you to do anywhere else. Let us help you today because we can pass more cars in here than you can out there. Tony Stewart is eight and a half seconds back in third, followed by Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Casey Mears in a pretty close pack. Then Jimmy Johnson. Casey 
Casey Mears here in the 25 car. I tell you, he's been pretty solid all day long. He qualified in the 11th position, but he was the first car to roll out and qualify when the track was at the hottest, and he hit the wall. Great qualifying run, but he's backing it up. He's been there in the top five to top 10 all day long. Now, a guy that really benefited from short pitting, Matt Kenseth in the 17 car, Robbie Riser. They were the first car to hit pit road, and the reason they did it, they thought they had a flat tire, but he pitted back on lap 93, about seven to 10 laps earlier than some of the leaders. He went from running 21st all the way to 14th, gained seven spots, but he run the risk of getting burnt by caution, but it paid off this time. Carl Edwards looking for his first top 10 finish with NASCAR's new car. The Dodge Avenger 500 on Fox is sponsored by Lowe's, proud home of Jimmy Johnson and Team 48. By McDonald's. By Stanley, make something great. And by Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. Next week, Major League Baseball on Fox, Yankees and Mets in high definition to the White Sox and Cubs. It's Saturday Baseball on Fox, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Check local listings for the game and the exact start time in your area. Back in Darlington, Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers with the gang. Keeping an eye on things, Denny Hamlin has been terrific. Carl Edwards back out in front. Tony Stewart, who has yet to win a race this year, has yet to win at this track in his 20 car. You think moving on up has a chance to pull this out today? He's looking awful good right now, but I think the key thing is that people keep saying why Tony Stewart hasn't won here before. I think it was a lack of patience. This is one of those racetracks, and Daryl and Larry and Mike keep talking about it since the beginning of our broadcast. You've got to go give and take. You've got to be smooth. You've got to realize you've got to race the racetrack before you start racing the competition. Now, maybe Tony's finally figured it out because he's definitely got his hands full, but he's doing a really good job. Carl Edwards, it's been 48 races since his last cup win, and we've seen the backflip. You've heard Daryl talk about how they're kind of coaching the driver, control, you know, race the racetrack here. You've got to talk to these guys from the drop of the green flag. You've got to keep reminding them you can't do what you normally do at every other racetrack. This is a different place. Got to race that racetrack, be smooth, float it in, save your tires, and be very, very smooth. And, of course, Hendrick Motorsports has won all of the car of tomorrow or new car races, and that's what this is here. How about their chances today? Well, I think right now, early on, I think we've got some great competition with Roush Racing as well as Gibbs Racing. But you take a look at this 48 car, man. I'm telling you right now, he, you can never count him out. And he's definitely got some battle scars when it comes to this racetrack. He's already got his early Darlington stripe, hasn't he, Darrell? Yeah, it's what I was going to say, Jeff. I'm really impressed with how resilient this car is. Uh, these guys are laying these things in the fence pretty hard, but because of that uh, foam in the right side door, and we got a caution on the racetrack, but this car is able to take a pretty good licking and keep on ticking, and that's what you need here at Darlington. And, Darrell, that solves one of the big misgivings about, the, tires on it here. about the car here. of tomorrow as Reed Sorensen has smacked the wall in the new car. Would the wing fly off? Would the splitter get bent up and prevent you from being able to race? This car is very robust, and it can take quite a hit, like this one. And, of course, you see who's right behind Reed Sorensen in the 41 God. car. He had definitely had was trying to step it up because, Jeff, he was about to go a lap down. And, and there, Larry, this is what we're always talking about when it comes to this racetrack. You can't worry about that leader coming on. You've got to stay within your own self. And it looks like Reed was trying so hard to keep him going down a lap. All of a sudden, he forced himself right into making a mistake. What did we say at the top of the show? Don't, don't beat overdrive, yourself. And don't don't overdrive. overextend your equipment. That's exactly right. What's going to happen on, <laughs> as Carl Edwards gets up against the pace car, what's going to happen on pit road, Dick? Oh, I don't know, Mike, but I can tell <laughs> you that Mike Nelson, crew chief for Ryan Newman, came off the box, looked at a picture of the nose of their car, and showed Brian Dilley where he wanted to have a piece of tape added to the grill. Hard to do that. Krista. Tony Stewart felt like he drove, overdrove his car just a little bit. Greg Zipidelli said, what can we do to help you? He said, just tires. That's all I need. Steve? Carl Edwards said he spun the tires exiting pit road on the last stop. Krista, as they come to pit road, they're going to take a little air out of the rear tires. Matt. And at this juncture, they're not going to make any changes on the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Very pleased with how that FedEx Chevy is running on this run. But you never know. They could always call a last-minute audible as the 11 is on its way to his box. 
Jeff Gordon has the first pit stall. He's already done in a way. So is Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Carl Edwards. Reason Carl Edwards in that 99 car gets out so quick is he's got an opening behind him, and Joe Nemechek in the 13 cars in front of him is a lap down. They got free open area to make that pit stop. Hamlin gets out first. And Casey Mears drops a few spots, three of them. The caution out for Reed Sorensen into the wall, and now all the lead lap cars have made pit stops. Darlington. Hey, it's the lady in black. Too tough to tame. America's oldest NASCAR super speedway. September 4th, 1950, the first 500 miler in NASCAR history. The place is packed, and the fans love the way they see racing here. It's going to be a drag race. Oh, they touch, they touch. What a race, what a place. The site of some great racing memories like David Pearson's 10 wins for Dale Earnhardt's nine. But today it's the Dodge Avenger 500 for NASCAR's new car, what we have been calling the car of tomorrow. Many drivers refer to it as the COT. It's just the new car from now on. Aerial coverage as we get set for the restart brought to you by Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for 25 years. Goodyear, get there. Kind of like the car manufacturers used to a long time ago. Introduce the new models, you know, about halfway through the current year. Right. So this is the 08 new car. The new car. You know, on our last restart, back about lap 44, we only had two or three cars to the inside that were a lap down. Now we have about 12 to 14. This is where intensity starts to pick up. For all the wives and mothers and mothers-in-law and grandmothers and all the mothers. A little Mother's Day, crank it up. A little symphony for mothers. And that 83 car hard in the inside wall off turn two. Caution will wave. Second caution of the day. We're done. And Brian was actually up there running in the top 20 with this Toyota. Watch the 83. Oh, he, I mean, he had to check up because J.J. Yaley in the 18 checked up and then gets hit from behind. Yeah, the 26 of McMurray just had a run on run and he couldn't get off of him. You feel so bad about that when things like that happen. I mean, it's a chain reaction. Once again, you see the lick it took. We've been talking about it. That wing never moved back there. Okay, keep digging. Yellow's going to be out behind. Counting the competition yellow, it's the third caution of the afternoon in Darlington. They're wheeling away Brian Vickers' car. He has brought out the third caution of the afternoon in Darlington. You know how on the highway somebody hits the brakes and then somebody hits the brakes and so on and so on, and the fifth car back is in the crash? Well, that's about what happened to Vickers. 
Time to check with Jeff Hammond for today's State Farm Safety Report. Last year, this four before protected the tires as well as the car when you got up against the wall. But this year, the new energy absorbing foam by Dow is going to be probably a key player. If you look here, the way the foam actually sticks by the rear tires as well as the front tire, it's going to give some protection against that dreaded Darlington strike. Everybody knows you're going to get one. So the foam is not only going to protect the driver, it's also going to help protect the tires. Thanks, Jeff. Now, not all the lead lap cars made pit stops under this caution, Larry, but some took advantage. Well, I think that just goes to show you how tires give up. Uh, we had 11 cars that pitted. We all had only run two laps since that restart, but most notably, Matt Kenseth running in 13th, Casey Kane running in 14th. Those guys hit pit road. So right now, I look in the top 14 cars are cars that actually stayed out on that caution. Boy, you're talking about the, car, the, uh, the new car. Look how much room's in this car now compared compared to the old car. Uh, this car has so much more headroom. Look how far away from the net he is. That's one of the big selling points to this car. Drivers usually sit close to that bar. They're usually right up against the net, and they've moved the driver over to the right quite a bit. And uh, that's a lot of room, and that looks like you're looking inside a truck almost. Yeah, this new car is essentially about four inches wider in the greenhouse area and about two to two and a half inches taller in that greenhouse. So Bobby Labonte is the recipient of the free pass, and we will restart with 26 cars on the lead lap, led by Denny Hamlin, Carl Edwards, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Ryan Newman. Green flag. The thing about these cautions, uh, you know, we say it all the time, they breed cautions, but you see why right here. You get everybody bunched up. Nobody can get out of anybody's way. If something happens like what happened off turn two over there a minute ago, somebody lifts a little bit, you hit them and they finally go. This is just a high-speed traffic jam on a two-lane road, and you're late for work. <laughs> Daryl Hart Jr. We're riding with him in this Budweiser car right now in the sixth position, looking out at Ryan Newman in the 12. We talked about him earlier. Started back in the 29th position after a little bobble qualifying, sitting there running in the top five now with the 12. You know, there is not a racetrack that we go to, none that I can think of, where you can't drive around it pretty easily by yourself. But when you earn your money, and when you find out how good you are, is right now. When you're in the middle of this pack of cars, who can finesse and who can work and who can get through this without wrecking their race car? Like the 25 of Casey Mears, who lost three spots in the pits, trying to make it back up. He's gotten into the wall pretty hard with the right side of his National Guard Chevy. That's what happens. It's the tyranny of the urgent. You lose a little, you got to get it all back. But you talked about it earlier, the, the, the Hendrick dominance. Right now, we have, you just saw three of those Hendrick cars running seventh, eighth, and ninth, and then Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car up there running in the fourth position, all of them in the top 10 again with this new car. Denny Hamlin and Carl Edwards starting to stretch it out. They've got almost two seconds on Tony Stewart, three and a half on Jimmy Johnson. Brian Newman, four and a half on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's uh, get a look at what Mother's Day means to some of the fellows who wheel these machines at high speeds. Let's start with Matt. Mike, if you ask Kurt Busch's mom, Gay, she'll tell you the trophies that are the most special to her and the ones she's most proud of aren't from Kurt's 15 wins or the championship. Her trophies are much bigger. They're those small glass figurines that Kurt would buy for her for Mother's Day. Now, when he was little, he told me he would start saving every penny from Valentine's Day to Mother's Day so he could go to the mall and pick out something very special for her. And she has saved every one of those priceless momentums. Steve... Matt, on our trackside show on Speed Friday, Carl Edwards paid his mother, Nancy Sterling, to left of your screen the ultimate compliment. He said, my mom is my best friend. I can talk to her about anything. He also went on to say that she helped finance his very first race car. Krista. Greg Biffle has won back-to-back -back races at Darlington, but his mom, Sally Biffle, was not here to see those races. This is her very first trip to this racetrack. Greg Biffle said the best Mother's Day present he could give her would be a third straight win and have her here to witness it. He's currently running 12. 
And you know, I know we just saw three of the drivers, Mom, but as I walked through the garage area this morning, so many truck drivers, crew members, crew chief, tire changers said, you know what? Please wish all of our moms a happy Mother's Day. We're sorry we can't be there, but you know what? We're here doing our job, and uh, that's what we have to do, and then we'll come home and see you. Today is Mother's Day, and what do moms do? Sacrifice their day to be here. Ryan Newman in the 12, currently fifth. Working in and amongst the lap cars. Trying to chase down these two. But Hamlin and Edwards, not going to be easy to catch. You know, one car that's been hanging out in the top 15 all day long. He started back at the 28th position. He's won a couple of races here. Sterling Marlin in this 14 car. He's up there right now battling with Greg Biffle. Matt Kenseth sitting there in the 13th spot. Pretty solid day for a veteran that you would think would have a good day at a place like this. Sterling's dad, Cuckoo uh, Marlin, used to run really well here, too. And I saw all of us that grew up in Nashville always thought this racetrack was very similar to that. I thought those laps that we run there really helped us when we came here, and Sterling is a good example of that. Dale Jr. running just outside the top five in the Bud Machine. Kyle Busch right behind him, hand out the window, signaling, ooh, uh, Steve, look, right side of that car has been a little recycled. Ah, uh, yes it has. Mike Joy, he picked up that Darlington stripe just moments ago. He asked his crew chief, Tony Erie Jr., hey, do you think I made my car tighter by hitting the fence? I know I hit it. Tony Jr.'s response was, nah, that's not the reason. We're adjusting air pressure to fix it. Wall rubbing ain't the reason. <laughs> <laughs> This is that lightly and slightly stuff right here. And if we'd have run last night, it'd have been all nightly, but we didn't get to do that. What's it sound and feel like? Well, join our Fox Ride Along program. Oh, that's just just as a slight strike. That's one of those bragging. That's the time you go home and say, man, I got my dog in strike. That used to be bragging rights there, boys. The good guys just get a little stripe, get a little streak on the side of them. Behind Junior, Kyle Bush working him over and trying to take over the sixth place. And right behind them, uh, Joe Nemechek in one of the Gin cars. Notable because I think that's the first time that a Chinese company has sponsored a NASCAR racer. Hire makes uh, consumer products and appliances. And they have a plant in Conway, 20 miles from here, so they wanted to get involved. Didn't when, didn't Brian France take a contingency and uh, go over to China and have a little visit, a little uh, in meeting over there with a lot of the businessmen and that uh, talked about NASCAR and how they could maybe do some uh, some sort of cross promoting possibly. Right. You know, I've been watching these two veterans go at each other right here. Jeff Burton in the 31, Mark Martin in the 01. Right now, they're battling for the 16th position. Now, of course, Jeff Burton, he has a couple of wins here. He has 24 Darlington starts. Mark Martin has a couple of wins here. There's a, there's a lot of starts and a lot of wins here at Darlington between those two guys and a lot of Bush Series starts as well. These guys just kind of, I think they're racing the elements, racing the racetrack right now. Hundred forty laps complete, two hundred twenty-seven to go in Darlington, South Carolina, on Fox. The Dodge Avenger Five Hundred on Fox is sponsored by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Brian Newman, our leading Dodge Avenger of the race, his teammate Kurt Busch in twelfth, Casey Kane fifteenth. If Dodge wins today. Dodge will donate a new adventure to the charity of the winning driver's choice. Ryan Newman, fifth place, Dick, seven seconds behind the leader. Yeah, as hard to believe as it is, Mike, Ryan has not had a top five finish since Infineon last year. 
But crew chief Mike Nelson has been off the box now three separate times working with car chief Brian Dilley. And this is what they're working on, a picture of the nose of the car. And right here, they are trying to put a patch on the nose that will stick. That's really hard to do because of all the trash that accumulates on the nose of a race car. They want the patch there to try to help heat the engine a little bit more. It's running too cool. They also want a little bit of help with handling. And there's a hole right there. So they're trying to get that patch on. It stopped after it stopped after it stopped. So Ryan can get his top five. And Dick, I'm sure one reason these guys are running cooler today than they anticipated is you, you go back and look at Friday. It was much warmer here. And a lot of their tape configuration on the front is based on the temperature we had Friday. Yeah, plus the, one of the complaints about this car is it just doesn't have enough front grip or front down force because of the way it's uh, the nose is designed. You open up a hole up there, the grill or a hole in the, in the bumper there, you're going to lose even more downforce. Car's not going to turn. So that's probably a big concern as well. And you put some tape right there on that left corner. If you can get it right there on the left corner of that grill, that helps plants that left front. That's the corner that makes that car turn if you can keep it planted to the racetrack. But what I like about the new car is what you see right uh, right here on Jeff Gordon's Chevrolet and on every one of these cars. If you draw a line right down the center of the car, what's to the left looks exactly like what's to the right. They're symmetrical and they look most like the cars in the showroom from that angle. And that was another one of the reasons this new car has come about, mainly because of safety, but to try to make cars where they were more standard and looked a lot alike. a mission accomplished there. We do need to make note that Robbie Gordon, the seven car, spent 42 laps in the garage area making repairs. He just went back out on the racetrack. Kevin LePage, who finally qualified for his very first race in 2007, he's retired at 37 car. That was uh, his 200th career next cup start uh, for Kevin LePage. Another thing about the new car that I like that really is turning out to be a, a, a good deal is the size of the fuel cell. They shrunk the fuel cell down from 22 gallon down to 18 gallon. What I like about that, Larry, is I, it looks like the amount of fuel they have and tire wear is almost married perfectly. Seems like these cars are out of fuel and out of tires at the same time now, and I like that a lot. I think it was a great compromise between running that 13 and a half gallon cell at the super speedways at Lowe's Motor Speedway like we did last year. I think it was a great compromise between those two sizes. I think it's helped tire problems. I think instead of having that extra four gallon in there, run another 20 laps or so and taking a chance on wearing your tires out. Now you're getting into the pits about the right time. We're cycling back through the top 10 or so. Back to Kyle Busch at six, Jeff Gordon there at seven. He is the next Dell Cup point leader and would leave here based on positions right now by 197 points. Here's our pole sitter, Clint Boyer. He has drifted back to eighth place. Just ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. They're behind Nemechek Jr. in the number eight, and the new 10th place car behind him is Matt Kenseth. Kenseth has just driven up into 10th place. Uh, bypassing Casey Mears. Now Mears has had a good race today. He stayed in the top dozen most all day. Matt. Mike, no changes the first two stops. Casey says the car is tight. He also had a brake issue. He had no pedal and then he had full pedal. They're going to keep an eye on that. But his mom, Carol, this morning got not one, not two, but three Mother's Day cards. Casey said he found three special cards, couldn't make up his mind. But he also said she has a huge present coming in two weeks. He said it was so special, he felt like he could wait for it to be shipped. And Mike, you know from his father, Roger, when Casey sent his dad to Barrett Jackson, the million dollar car auction with a blank check, Casey takes care of his family. They're taking great care of him. Yes, they have. Now, most of these guys, they were on pit road back at that 117, like Kurt Busch in the two car. So we're getting within about 15 to 20 laps of what would be another set of green flag stops. Now, this is an interesting part of the race. I know folks at home may say, oh, it's kind of boring right now. It's really not. Right now, you're setting up your strategy, working on your car. Look at this. I mean, we got a lot of racing going on, so it's not like it's nothing happening here. But this is the part of the race when you have to be careful and not lower yourself into getting real comfortable here, riding around, putting in some laps, 
and run up there and hit the wall or run over somebody. This is that point of the race when you don't want to beat yourself. But I think as we talked at the top of the show, comers and goers, I think we are looking at one of those comers right now. That 17 car, Matt Kenseth, started back in 31st. It is a Matt Kenseth type of race. They took a little bit of a gamble making a pit stop on that last caution. That gamble has paid off. Happy Mother's Day. We're 157 laps in. In-car communication is relatively new in stock car racing. Here's how they used to do it back in the day. With signboards and chalk, there's Morris Petty, Richard's brother. And the Wood Brothers, signaling Marvin Panch. Oh, Reese here. <laughs> now the spotters are up on the roof. They're in two-way communication with the driver, the crew chief, and sometimes even with the owner back home. In the way the driver would communicate. Still outside, still there, still there, still there, still there. Clear, clear all around. Now the way the driver used to communicate to the crew chief about what he needed, what was wrong with his race car, he would sometimes like pat the door if the car was loose or pat the roof of the car if it was tight, it was pushing too much, sliding the front wheels. Yeah, and he'd pat on his helmet if he was getting tired and needed a relief driver. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was tough. I, I mean, I, I came in right at the end of that era. Pit boards and, I mean, you'd watch the uh, sign in the uh, the pylon in the infield to try to figure out when your next pit stop was going to be because you really couldn't see a pit board. I mean, you, they'd run out in the racetrack and wave it at you, but it was hard to really see when to come down to pit run. You know, Mike, watching Denny Hamlin, this 11 car lead, lead this race, and once again, we're probably getting within about 10 laps of what will be pit stops. He's led 117 laps of this race. But even though Joe Gibbs Racing, they've not been to Victory Lane this year and certainly not with the new car to Victory Lane. We've had four of those races. Of course, Hendrick winning all four. But Joe Gibbs Racing coming into this fifth new car race, they've led almost 50% of the laps in those races. And just go back to how strong Denny Hamlin was at Phoenix and was speeding on pit road. His teammate, Tony Stewart at Bristol. They just hadn't sealed the deal, but they are certainly leading a lot of laps with this new car. In fact, when Hamlin, well, it's happened. Denny Hamlin has now be become the first driver to lead 500 laps in NASCAR's new race car. Jeff Gordon is the next Hill Cup leader. He is seventh in the race right now, Steve. Ten and a half seconds off the lead. Yeah, Mike, he's a six-time winner at this racetrack. Now, interesting, uh, as Daryl pointed out, you've got to be careful in this part of the race. Jeff Gordon saying his car is too tight getting in the corners and on late exit, which is the exact opposite of what his race car was doing earlier in the race. Expect him to pit on lap 181. And his crew chief, Steve Letarte, said, Jeff, we've got half a race to fix it. Be patient. And because of the abrasiveness of the racetrack, when we started this, we noted the track didn't have any rubber in it. This track continues to rubber up and it really gets slick, and you've got to constantly be adjusting the wedge, the air pressure, the track bar, something to keep ahead of the racetrack changing. And you just want to make sure you don't, what we call, jump the fence with your adjustment. Don't go from one extreme to the other and have it go from real loose to real tight. Fourth place battle. Jimmy Johnson rolls on past. That's not the first time that we've seen Carl Edwards in the 99 somewhat roll over like that, knowing, hey, we've got a pit stop coming. We still over have over half this race. I'm not going to push the envelope here. 
Matt Denny Hamlin now has a three and a half second lead on his Gibbs teammate Tony Stewart. Mike and he has a car that just keeps getting tighter and tighter. Mike Ford and car chief Spider Gillen working on a game plan for their next stop on how to free up that race car. But this team like Larry Mack documented they feel so snake bit on the new car races. Bristol a fuel pickup problem at 177 laps. Martinsville pit road problem. Richmond they led 12 laps and then of course in Phoenix they came back to finish third at their pit road speeding penalty leading another 70 laps 432 total coming in they really want to knock one down and Denny loves this place his first push start here he excelled and he has excelled here ever since Hamlin leads by nearly four seconds we saw Casey Kane get slow off turn two he has cut a tire perhaps from wall contact Krista yeah, exactly. A tire going down, and before that happened, he said his car needed more side bike. The plan was to take another half rubber out of the right rear spring on this stop, but then the tire went down, so they had to come in earlier, much earlier than planned. No side bite also for Casey Kane. Larry, how early is this compared to when he make his scheduled stop? I think we were within about five to eight laps of a scheduled stop. So actually, if we can cycle through, he's going to have these fresh tires, with the exception they had a fairly lengthy pit stop there. That's going to cost him a lot of time, but he'll get advantage of those fresh tires. Looking over the track where Robbie Gordon slammed the wall in turn two after repairing heavy crash damage from hitting it there earlier. And Kenny Francis right now and Casey Kane are saying, please get to the pit road. Don't don't spin out or stop out here because then they would be burnt by the caution flag. Well, he'll get there. David Gilliland is in the pits as well for his scheduled stop coming a little bit, but not too early. But again, I just note how tough the sides of these cars are. Normally we'd get a debris caution off of Robbie Gordon smack into the fence over there. Nothing fell off the car. He's made it back to pit road. Yeah, Robbie hit it hard enough. Who I think with the old car would have killed the car the first if not the second time I totally agree and no debris uh, from bouncing off the wall at turn two so we'll stay green juniors in coming behind that seven right near behind that seven Steve and Mike, they had a similar problem at Richmond last week as the track got more and more rubber, the looser they got. They had a hard time making adjustments on the Budweiser Chevy. Tony Erie Jr. saying yesterday, hey, we kind of figured that Dale Earnhardt might be leaving, but we're going to continue to work hard. We want to win a championship. Jimmy Johnson comes in behind him, Steve. David Stremme has made his stop and goes back out. Long way down pit road here at 45 miles an hour. So Jimmy will be the first of the Hendrick cars to pit, Matt. And Mike Canauer, the catch game man, has a wedge wrench in his hand to make a chassis adjustment for Jimmy Johnson. He's pitting on the island where you just go past the tunnel that comes in the infield. There's about seven pit stalls. You have to make a, a hard left-hand turn. You can see Ron Malik make the change. Jimmy thought he might have had some kind of tire issue, and Chad told him, if you feel something wrong, just go ahead and pit now. Good stop by the 48 guys. Away. And Matt, I, 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 I thought that right front tire looked soft when they took it off. I might be mistaken, but sure looked like it was. Kevin Harvick getting tires and fuel as well. Matt's there. And the right front tire that came off all the way around the inner side of the carcass, it was down to the cords on that right front. That's what Jimmy Johnson felt. That's why he's a championship driver. And Matt, that's where these guys are walking on a razor blade right now. As you see Jeff Burton making his stop. You, you've got to keep this car freed up to keep it off that right no front water tire a little bit. I got no water pressure. But you can't make it loose. It sounds like maybe Jeff Burton possibly could have some engine problems maybe for the second week in a row. And I think Joe Nemechek hit the wall coming off turn two. The most recent of many drivers to do so as we cycle through green flag yeah. stops. Oh, yeah, you yeah. see, Joe, he's got a left front down. Left front's down, left front's down. Coming to you. This is... Hey, guys, get your right side. Make sure you guys lift up on the left when he gets in. Make sure you lift up on the left when he gets in. This is the most difficult time in the race, right before pits, because the track is treacherous. The car's hard to drive. Tires are worn out. Got to be careful not knock the fence down. The leader's in in front of Matt. And John Perino with the air gun will blow the brake dust out of the left front. Is there a way to take a look at that right front? It looks good that comes off the 11. They're going to make a chassis adjustment. He was way too tight, Krista. Well, Tony Stewart having the same 
problem is his teammate way too tight. He wanted the team to make the same adjustment they made much earlier. They needed the car loosened up. He wanted it to go in the same direction, just a little bit looser. Now Ryan Newman has taken over the lead. That's the first time a Dodge has led with the new car. And Darrell, I think this is the most difficult time of the race. You have some cars out there on really worn tires going slow, and then you got some rockets out there on brand new tires. There's only two seconds difference in new tires and old ones. So when you run up on somebody, they don't know which way you're going to go. And you're going so fast, sometimes you get run over. We talked about communication in spotters. That's where the spotter is so important, letting you know here comes a car on fresh tires. Dick. Ryan Newman is having his best run of 2007. Brings the car to a halt as the crew begins to service it. No major changes on the car. Wrench in the back. Minor adjustment, Steve. The 99 had gotten real loose on this run, Dick Bergeron, so they're going to add some bite. They'll also make an air pressure adjustment. Carl Edwards doing a good job of racing the racetrack here in Darlington. A smart move by Jamie McMurray. Newman was coming out of his pits. Jamie locked up the brakes three pits short of his own pit so he wouldn't run into Newman as he was coming in. Remember what possibly cost Kevin Harvick that race last week at Richmond is they were not heads up. That was heads up right there, especially this early in the race. Another smart move was by that 17 car. He stayed out and led a lap before he made his pit stop. So that's five bonus points for him. Good job on their part. And that's a result of them pitting under the prior caution when most of the leaders stayed out. Could stay out just that little wee bit longer. Let's show you again Newman exiting McMurray coming in and a lot of it is timing and the rest of it is judgment. You saw the big skid marks from Jamie Mack where he had to lock it up. It ended up working out good for everybody. No yeah. harm no foul. Murray asked he is in 20th place right now 24 seconds back so that puts the leaders about seven or eight seconds behind him and NASCAR checking for debris now that we have cycled through green flag stops they had been looking on the back straight away and continue to check out that situation and caution is out for debris we'll be right back. The Dodge Avenger 500 on Fox is sponsored by DLP. HDTV powered by DLP. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. By the Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. By AT&T, the leader in wireless. And by Ford, bold moves. They happen every day. Okay. Twist mark. Caution out for debris on the track. Joe Nemechek in the 13 car and a part of the debris off of his car bringing out the caution flag and in that time Jimmy Johnson and Tony Stewart did pit Denny Hamlin who has gone 26 races in between victories has led most of the way in fact he's led laps in five of the last six races meanwhile Dale Earnhardt Jr. making a lot of news this week and earlier today our Daryl Waltrip talks with Daryl with I should say Dale Earnhardt Jr. after his news conference. I know fans miss your dad. I miss your dad. How much do you miss your dad? Um, every day, especially times like this. Um, I know if he were here, we wouldn't be doing this and making these decisions and things like this wouldn't be happening to me. But even now, you know, I'm, this is where I'm at, and this is what's going on, and this is today. I'd love to have his information and what he could help me, you know, and and. Uh, what he would tell me to do. And uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. with a lot more to say with Darrell Waltrip when we have time throughout the rest of this race. We will hear those comments. Uh, the day started Jeff Hammond with a problem. His crew being penalized for a wing bracket violation. Well, I'll say they were caught with a wing violation right now. The penalty will come on Tuesday, but early on, Chris, I mean, he really marched his way right up through the field. Carl looked a very solid. A lot of forward bite in that number eight car. And uh, he's been up and down a little bit, but he has been a factor. Started 21st, junior as high as fourth, currently running 16th with this caution out. And the speculation about where he'll go 
next we heard from fans how about the the sponsorship he said he wants to remain in a Chevy should we assume that Budweiser will remain with him as his full sponsor no Chris I think that's the other interesting part of it I think they still got some obligations as far as Budweiser with DEI and it kind of opens the door you know for other companies to be looking at Dale Earnhardt Jr and most notably I mean recently talking to some folks say that Visa Okay. I mean, they're a huge company. They're looking at this young man. He's a great marketing tool, and I think a lot of companies are going to be looking at him because he's such an icon. Life takes Visa. Life might take, or Visa might take Dale Earnhardt yep. Jr. A lot to be decided uh, after this season is complete when he's on the free agent market. Let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Larry, this caution flag was a big break for one contending driver. This young man right here, Carl Edwards, in that 99 car, he's running in the third spot. Now, remember, we cycled through the green flag pit stops. When that caution came out, we had 13 cars that pitted under caution. We had 11 that stayed out, including Carl Edwards. But what he did on his green flag stop, he, he violated the commitment line. Coming to pit road, if it had stayed green, it would have been a drive through, a pass through penalty under green, probably went more than a lap down. But because the caution came out shortly after his pit stop, that now the, the penalty has started to tail in the longest line. Huge break for a guy that's had a very good race car, but he's got his work cut out for him now. Here's Edwards under green, trying to make a late turn in to the pits. And Stevie missed the commitment line. He took it over on the racetrack side instead of coming straight across it. Uh, Mike, he's kind of confused about that, to be honest with you. He just asked his uh, spotter, Jason Hedleski, to help clear it up. Uh, they were going to stay out, but when they received that penalty, they decided to come in, take four tires, and get gas. Might as well get those four tires. You're going to be back there anyhow. And we have this line every week. Uh, you, they used to put a cone right there, Daryl, at that yep. intersection. Uh, and that's here is the commit line here, and you'll see Edwards' path. Yeah, and what the what the problem is, is the apron's so big here, we used to play cat and mouse. We'd get down on the apron, act like we're coming in, and right at the last second, somebody would turn back out in the racetrack, and we had a couple of crashes by people doing that. They put up the commitment cone or the commitment line. And you, sometimes we do use the cone, but here to be out near the racetrack, Dick, that line, that intersection of painted lines, got to be hard to see from the driver's seat, though. Yeah, I'm sure it is, Mike. And yesterday in the driver's meeting, David Hoots, who conducts the driver's meeting on three separate occasions, warned drivers about entering pit road here and told them how careful they had to be in order to avoid a problem and we have seen it time and again in our Fox broadcast here at Darlington where some of the very best drivers in NASCAR have had trouble getting onto pit road. The reason the cone is here is this. Those are the uh, Fitch and Fitch inertia absorbing barrels that racer John Fitch designed that protect a lot of highway abutments. And you don't want to let a driver make such a late turn in that he risks smashing into those. Well, there's the cone right there. Oh, <laughs> right. They just put it over there on the wall. So okay. out they, of the knew, way. they knew it wouldn't last very <laughs> long right. over on that other side. That's John, still even pretty late compared to most pit roads. John Fitch designed those barrels. He is now 91 raced at Bonneville last fall. He is still designing and inventing and concentrating on race driver safety. 91. Yeah, that's my role model. <laughs> my I would say my hats off to him. Thank you very much. because You've done a lot of great work. So see that orange square. Imagine it's a cone and. That's where you need to be. Oh, it's kind of like once upon a time. <laughs> All right, let's get ready for the restart. We are just past halfway. We took the halfway crossed flags under this caution flag. Denny Hamlin, Ryan Newman, Matt Kenseth, Chevy Dodge Ford, the front three. The first of the Toyotas is Dave Blaney in 10th. Yeah, the top 10 cars basically stayed out, but I don't think we're going to see a big difference here because the, the pit stops just had cycled through. Really, the guys that came to pit road that time were guys that pitted early in the green flag cycle. You know when this Fox 3D is really going to look realistic? When they get all those Darlington stripes and everything's all scratched off down the side, but as long as it doesn't scratch it off the hoods. That was seven years ago. Our hero was on TV yesterday. Who's that? When he says, and he's on it. Tom Carnegie. Yes, in Indianapolis. 64, 61 years wow. at Indy. The restart from our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam is Denny Hamlin. Hamlin takes him off into turn one.
Tony Stewart in 12th. You know, I know we're riding with Tony Stewart right now back there in the 12th position. He's one of the cars that made a pit stop. We're looking up there at Dave Blaney in the 22, one of the guys that stayed out. There's Carl Edwards in the 99 now. We talked about him starting to tail in the longest line, trying to pick his way back up through there. That last lap, he got two cars. But a car I'm pretty impressed with. And this group, they just keep getting stronger and stronger. We saw him on our 3D animation. Martin Truex Jr. in that one car, sitting up there running in the top five in a DEI car. Krista? Well, obviously, with DEI, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, in the news, we talked with Martin Truex this weekend saying, with Junior's decision, what does that do to you? He said, my contract runs through 2008. I am happy with my team. I plan to honor that commitment. He said he rode to the track in the helicopter with Dale Jr. on Friday morning, and they talked about everything but the contract. They talked about fishing, hunting, movies, you know, just like normal guy conversation. But he's running really well. They've made just small adjustments all day long to this car. And he and Kevin Mannion seem like they have been one of the groups they've really adapted well to this new car here in the fifth race for it. Paul Menard in the number 15, another DEI car, is reported dragging the exhaust system and they black flagged him. Well, the exhaust on this car comes out the right side. If you've been in the wall, and he has been a number of times, very possible he's ripped uh, the tailpipes loose on that right side. So he definitely needs to get to pit road because if those things come off, they go flying out among the car, not only will wreck him, but somebody behind him. It's very dangerous. And here he comes to pit road. The attention, Tony, you're you can see on that group. You can see it all hanging down there. So he's definitely had it in the wall, ripped them loose from the uh, frame underneath there. Need to make note, Reed Sorensen in the 41 car after repairs in the garage area, 57 laps down. He's back on the racetrack. Here we are at Darlington, just a little bit. Even our camera took a little bit of a lick here. It's got a, it's on a Darlington strike. But right now, a little past halfway of this 500 mile race, we only have two cars out of the race, Kevin LePage and Brian Vickers. Trying to decide which is more impressive, the ease with which Denny Hamlin drives away from this field or the race that Ryan Newman is having in second place. Well and away, Newman's best race of the season. The thing about it is, Mike, that would only six, there have been six races, 10 races this year, six times the guy that's led the most laps has not won. And that man has been Denny Hamlin on a couple of occasions. <laughs> I'm not trying to jinx him because he got a great race car, but we always look at the numbers, and that's one that jumped out at me. Brian Newman's last win 55 races ago. Loudon, 2005. Singular AT&T Wireless Virtual Crew Chief question. Round two. Will someone other than a Chevrolet win its first race with NASCAR's new car today? Chevrolet has won them all so far. Right now, a Dodge is in second and a Ford is third. Text the message CREW to 191 from your AT&T or Singular Wireless phone or go to FoxSports.com. Keyword singular. Well, this is definitely a racetrack and a 500-mile race here. You don't really ever know what, who's the star of this show is going to be to get down near the end of it. Because some guys just kind of hang back and stay out of trouble and save their stuff. Two of them are running third and fourth right now. Matt Kenseth and Jeff Gordon, 17 and 24. Dave Blaney is the highest running Camry in the race. You know their big goal here today, Mike, they came in here 37th in owner points. The car that was 36, Scott Riggs in the 10, did not make this show. And right now, Ricky Rudd on the bubble, the 88 car, he's running in 38th position. This 22 car trying to get to the top 35 in owner points before we get to Lowe's Motor Speedway, because if they can get there, that means at the Coca-Cola 600, they don't have to qualify on time. Boy, I tell you what, though, he ran up on the back of Dale Jr. off turn two over there, Larry, and he had to turn, he got on the brakes, talking about the 22 of Blaney, got on the brakes and almost spun that bad boy out. I think it's safe to say if Blaney finished, can get to the top 10 at the checkered flag, he could move into the top 35 and have a qualifying exemption. Now, Junior's underneath of Reagan here in the six, and he can't come off that corner wide open like he'd like to. Blaney's got to run, but as you can see, he had to really get on the brakes hard to keep running in the back of Dale Junior. We've seen that several times off turn two over there. 
And look how it backs everybody up. I mean, one bobble up there by one car, and it can really slow the whole crowd down. Now, Carl Edwards restarted 25th. Edwards has cracked the top 20 after serving that penalty during the caution flag. I think he just has to be careful and be patiently aggressive. Do not use your stuff up here getting back to the front. We still have over 165 laps to go in what, several pit stops. Yeah, and I was going to say, that's what he's got to do. you got to pass the ones on the track that you can safely and then depend on your pit crew to pass a few more of them. And whoa, three wide down into turn one, <laughs> Kurt Busch. I just looked Martin down at My goodness. That was wild. There was a slower car uh, on the outside holding both of them. And, and now it sorts out. But that was a moment. <laughs> And it results in Bush moving up to fifth and Truex dropping to sixth. Watching from Elliott Sadler, who is the first car one lap down. No car, so just take care of your stuff and uh, maybe we'll catch a break. And that break right now would be a caution flag. That would put him back on the lead lap. It looked like Hamlin was flirting with that wall down there in, in uh, three and four that time. You know, that's one kind of break that Elliott Sadler's looking for, but we've been talking a lot when we run this new car about how much brakes these guys are using, even at a track this size. Just look at the brake dust there in the right front of our pole sitter, Clint Boyer, the 07 car. That dust that just fell out of that right front. Look at it there, Carl Edwards. Now remember, these are good handling race cars. Trust me, the cars that are not handling good, not turning good, they're using more brake. I guarantee you there'll be more dust pouring out of their wheels. Oh yeah, you can you could wear your brakes out here. It's not likely, but you could because of the massiveness, the size of the brakes they run here. So did Denny Hamlin catch I, the wall? That was the question for our replay producers. I'm pretty sure he did. I think he scrubbed it. He was right up there flirting with it. And right there, he just kissed it. Darrell, what did I say at the top of the show? Never let your guard down, even with a two-second lead. Oh, the yeah. old lady will get you. You think you can run faster? Come on, boy. Yeah, that's right. I've been waiting on you. They used to repaint the walls here the night before the race. I don't think they have a big enough maintenance staff to do that this weekend. Way too much wall, way too many stripes. Pretty clean there. Pretty clean for turn two, especially, because yes. that's where we saw a lot of problems during qualifying and in practice on Friday. And that area was repainted, Larry, because there was a, a sponsor decal or, that was just ripped right off, and it's all been replaced and repainted. Uh, turns three and four, not so much. Denny Hamlin leads Ryan Newman by 1.6 seconds with 162 laps to go. Huh. It's going to be a drag race. Wow. They touch. They touch. Craven got it. Craven got it. Craven got it. Craven. Have you ever? No, I've never. Wow. Oh. What a finish. The margin, 0 .002 seconds. Ricky Craven over Kurt Busch. The last time that a single car team won a Nextel Cup race. Ricky Craven led only the final lap for uh, Cal Wells to win that race. The most important lap. Yep. He didn't actually lead a lap. Like well, a, maybe like 10 feet. Official. <laughs> yeah. Today, our NAPA race summary Denny Hamlin has led 158 laps. Carl Edwards led 33 and was a contender until that pit road penalty, but Edwards is fighting back. He's back up to 16. We had a competition yellow and three more cautions, and now a problem with Tony Stewart and the Home Depot Chevy. Roll, roll. Flat left, right, Flat left rear tire. The big thing is get to pit road as safely and as quick as possible without that thing coming apart, which start ripping the quarter panel. And he now looks like he's going to make it to pit road. When you see a left rear tire down like 4, that, 000, 4, more, 000. Than, more than likely, he's made contact with someone. Didn't see any damage to the quarter panel, Daryl, but you're right. He may have. Cut so it. he didn't probably get the walls somewhere, of course, especially not with that side. No, something 
got in there and cut the tire maybe. Maybe we've got a long ways to go. Chris, to have a look when he comes in, see if there's any damage to that left side. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. Tony on the radio, you heard him coming into pit road. He said it's amazing they've been running this well and to see some of the traffic and some of the damage out there, and they're the ones who get the flat tire. Looks like right now everything looks okay. We're trying to get a good look, but as they're changing the tires, it's a flat tire, and this could kill what would be a great run for Tony Stewart. We still got a long way to go, and Tony's got a pretty decent race car. We got 153 laps to go. Of course, what these guys need now is they need to either let this thing go through some green flag runs here, or they need to get that first car a lap down, get a free pass quickly, get back on the lead lap. You know what else they need to do? Keep, get that driver, get his attitude back right now. We're not beaten. Got a long way to go. You heard uh, Zippy say that. Don't give up on us, buddy. Matt Denny Hamlin's lead has dropped down to seven tenths of a second. Two things as crew chief Mike Ford told me, Mike, before the race. He said, I hope it stays overcast all day. That will help play into our hands because we know we're going to be dealing with a green racetrack. Right now, though, the car is still on the tight side. They've been working to free it up over the past few stops, and it is still tight. In fact, over the past 15 laps, he has seen his two-second lead dwindle down now to about seven-tenths of a second over Ryan Newman. You know what, Matt? I know it was slightly, but he did scrape the wall, and the car has really slowed down a little bit ever since that happened. Could just be a minor thing, but that's all it takes when you got somebody breathing down your throat like... Uh, like the 12 car Newman is. There's what's left of the gap as Ryan Newman tries to lead for the second time today. You know, the biggest thing when I look at the front end of Ryan Newman's car, remember we talked about that earlier, that they were making the plan to put some tape on the nose of that car, and you can see they got it right there on that left side. It's helping the car go down the straightaways, but most importantly, it's planting that left front. It's put more downforce on that left front corner. Now they have a comfortable lead. They're three and a half seconds ahead of Matt Kenseth, the third place car. As you watch from our aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for 25 years. I think that shot just shows you how narrow this racetrack is. I mean, there's Denny up high and Ryan pretty much at the bottom or near the white line. And that's about all the rumor is on this racetrack for about two cars. How narrow the racing groove is. The it's groove. a wide, lot oh, yeah. of asphalt out there. It's all apron below that white line. Yeah. Well, when this track was new, Daryl, in 1950, they raced on the apron. The banking was the safety lane. If you slid out of the apron, you could slide up the banking. Get your grip back and get back down there. You know, a few weeks ago, Mike, we were talking about why don't they start more cars. The first race here, they started 75 cars. They came back the next year, started 82 cars here for a 500-mile race. Johnny Mance won that first Southern 500, average speed 75 miles an hour. The race, Labor Day weekend 1950, took six and a half hours. He led 351 laps, and that's the most laps ever led by a Darlington race winner. Mance's secret, his speed secret, everyone else had passenger car tires. He had six-ply truck tires. They didn't blow out as often. He would have started last in our field today. He started 43rd. So, I mean, that was back a long time ago, I know, but uh, we've seen some racetracks where it made, makes sense to me to maybe start another car or two. Hey, what, Ryan Newman in his 12, he wants the lead away from Denny Hamlin in this 11 car. You know what I think Denny Hamlin says? We're within about 15 to 20 laps of a pit stop. My car is not as good as yours right now. Go ahead and take the lead. He'll take it going off into turn three. I just, I, I just got to believe he hurt that car a little bit when he scraped it up against the wall, knocked a little toe out of it or something. Because it hadn't, it's just hadn't been quite as good. Well, the Penske Dodges are coming on. Kurt Busch and Ryan Newman finished fifth and sixth at Richmond. Right now, they are first and fifth. The Dodge Avenger 500 on Fox is sponsored by Wendy's. Get in the middle of flavor. Check out Wendy's new double melt and do what tastes right. The walls were white when we started in Darlington County.
but the Darlington Stripe usually off turn two. It's been all the way around. This is the middle of turn three to the middle of turn four. And there's hardly a bit of that safer barrier uh, that is unscathed. There is the middle of turn two looking much the same. Brian Newman, our leader in a Dodge by 1.7 seconds. Let's see how you answered our singular AT&T wireless question. 73% of you think the Chevy domination with NASCAR's new car will continue. 27% think it could be Ryan Newman's Dodge or Carl Edwards Ford or who knows. You know, you talked at the very beginning of the show about, you know, the Hendrick dominance of the new car. And, and I listened to an interview this week by Rick Hendrick and they asked him, he said, I'm very proud of what my guys have accomplished with this new car. But he said the other thing, there were cars that were better than we were during these races, and when they fumbled, we picked the ball up. You go back to Bristol, Tony Stewart and the fuel pump cable. Go back to Phoenix, Denny Hamlin speeding on pit road. Go back to last week at Richmond, Kevin Harvick, the accident on pit road. All those cars looked like they could compete with these Hendrick cars. They fumbled. The Hendrick cars did not. Steve, how about our point leader then? That's one of those Hendrick cars, Jeff Gordon, who's in fourth place. Mike, they've been chasing this racetrack most of the day. They started loose, then he went to the tight side. Now Jeff just said they're loose everywhere. Screw Chiefs, Chief McCart said, Tip four, you're doing a great job. When you hit hit road, we're gonna make a track bar adjustment and adjust the air pressure. Tell you what they better be doing, they better be planning ahead. I tell you why. I'm seeing a lot of blue skies starting to show up here. Before this race so wet, the sun's gonna be shining and it's gonna change everything. Yes, sir. She'll start losing more grip when that old track temperature goes up. Now he's about to be caught by his teammate Jimmy Johnson. They're running in very, very tight formation here, fourth and fifth, Matt. Mike, what a weekend Jimmy Johnson has had. Had a great save in final practice with contact with the 20 car, Tony Stewart. Saved the car, no damage, but right now they need to help in the handling department. So he needs to be freed up all the way around. Back on lap 184, he says it was free, not bad, but boy, now it's really on the tight side as he works around his teammate. Green flag stops beginning. Kevin Harvick is the first taker to come down the pit lane along with Casey Kane. Now Kane is not on the lead lap uh, and neither is Harvick now that he's peeled off to his children's crew. Now this is a little early but I think Todd Barrier the crew chief of Kevin Harvick says you know what we need a little something. This race is pretty strung out right now. It has a green flag look about it. Let's get advantage of these fresh tires maybe four five six laps before some of these other guys come in. Second place changed hands. Matt Kenseth goes past Denny Hamlin. Yeah, you know, I think Hamlin's car is really, really just gone off. He needs tired badly. But I'm going to be anxious to watch this 17 car of Matt Kenseth with 134 laps to go. Dick Bergman was telling us a while ago during commercial break, we talked about brakes and brake usage that Matt Kenseth is complaining about his brakes right now. So it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds for the 17 car. Remember, started back in the 31st position, running second here with 133 laps to go. Maybe that's why he's running so fast. Can't stop. Can't slow her down because <laughs> he is passing cars pretty easily. Jeff Hammond, when a car that's on the lead lap stops early like this, so like Harvick just did, how closely as a competing crew chief do you monitor his lap times to maybe alter your strategy as to when to bring your driver in? Mike, I think the key thing right now is like what Larry McReynolds was saying, is you're starting to try to back this race up, run it from, from, the, from the end to the present part we are, and make your mind of whether or not you worry about fuel and tires and how many more stops you need to do based off of those lap times. And they can't influence you a ton because you're right there with this guy. You can't afford him to distance you or put you down laps that you can't make up. We're getting toward the end of this race. There's only about three, uh, three stops to go. you got to have a lot of strategy working in your favor. Well, the biggest thing we talked about this earlier is his spotter. He's going to be catching cars so much quicker because of those fresh tires. But I'm watching the scoring monitor. And right now, Kevin Harvick, well, he, he ran a slow lap then because of traffic. But he's running a little over a second a lap quicker than even our leaders. But he needs this thing to stay green. If you've got questions, our answer man, Tom Jensen, is on duty all throughout the race. 
Log on to FoxSports.com on MSN. Keyword answer. And he'll dial you in. David Rudiman, David Stremme on pit road, and Martin Truex as green flag stops continue. Oh, Martin's found the fence as he comes down in front of Krista. Uh oh, trouble turn three. The six and the 21 look like are into each other over there. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Not and what Kevin up. Harvick and Martin Truex Jr. wanted to see a caution flag. Get it rolling if you can, get it rolling if you can. Boy, Reagan and Schrader looked like they were welded together going into turn three. Yeah, they got, they, Schrader was down the inside of the six and they got up in the six and they just went dancing from there. So, Krista, did Truex stop or did he continue and roll on through? I believe he yeah, went right straight on. Flat right now. That's the uh, right front of the 21 car, Kenny Schrader, who was involved in this little melee over here. See him going down into turn three there. Looks like Schrader just kind of tried to get under uh, Reagan in the six and didn't quite make it. And Daryl, he, uh, David Reagan in the six almost got the car straightened out, but I think he picked up stuff on his tires and he just couldn't control the car. That's one thing. I, another thing I like about this car, you slow it down so much in the corner that uh, you can save it. You know, it's not not going crazy and backing up in the fence and all. You got to slow down enough that uh, you can drive through some of these wrecks. Pit stops for the leaders, Steve. Mike, they're going to tighten this 24 car up just a bit. They're going to make a chassis adjustment. They've made an air pressure adjust adjustment. Jeff saying the car was a little bit free, but it really started to get fast. Dick. Ryan Newman is on pit road. He has no cars in front of him, no cars behind him right now. That will make executing fast pit stops even faster. The crew making a minor adjustment to the car. That's it, Matty. Jimmy Johnson looking for his third Darlington win. The car still too tight in the center. They're going to make another adjustment. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin, his car extremely tight. He was just trying to hold on couldn't wait for their stop, which was scheduled to be at lap 240. But as we see time and time again, look who prevailed on pit road. We talked to Matt Kenseth about this yesterday. The killer bees in that 17 car, they take the lead, leaving pit road. So the game has changed and the sun comes out in Darlington County. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Sunday, May 27th, NASCAR on Fox in Charlotte. For last year, Casey Kane ended Jimmy Johnson's run of dominance, holding him off the last 29 laps. Next, Hill Cup Racing from Fox, Charlotte. Sunday, May 27th, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific in high definition. Kenny Schrader stayed out to lead a lap in the Wood Brothers number 21, bringing tears to the eyes of longtime fans. But Darlington, the Wood Brothers had quite a run here back in the day. Matt Kenseth will lead him to the restart from our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam. It's amazing how quickly your fortunes can change here. Martin Truex, who we were talking about running the top five there for a while, now he's one lap down back in uh, 23rd position. Right, he had come to pit road under three, and the caution came out while he was on pit road. And who it really bit, we talked about Kevin Harvick. He's now back in 28th position. He's actually two laps down in that 29 car, one of the cars that got burned by that caution. Krista. Martin Truex definitely getting burned by that caution. In fact, his crew chief, Kevin Bonomanian, had said roll through, roll through as he came down pit lane. The guys had already gone over the wall, so they just changed the right side tires, trying to catch up and stay on the lead lap. They could not get the lucky dog because they were on pit road when that caution came out, so they had to come back down again on lap 240 to change the left side tires. Spotter Joey Meyer, a cheerleader, though, for Truex right now, saying, don't give up. We have got a great car. We're going to get this one back. And Krista, this is not the first time this has burnt this group, especially when they had a good race car. Go back to Phoenix. They were one of the cars that were burnt by that caution flag late in that race after making a green flag stop, as well as Ryan Newman in the 12 car that night. Now, Denny Hamlin came out of the pits in fifth place. That led to a bit of a team meeting down on pit road. Matt? 
and Mike Ford taking on his role to even greater importance of being the football coach on this 11 team, trying to rally his guys, get them to shake off their slow pit stop the last time down on Pitt Road, knowing they've got at least one more stop until the checkers. They don't want to throw away what has been a great day today, trying to get their guys to shake it off and get ready for the next, it will be probably the most important stop of the day. To do well at Darlington, you must first finish, and that is a concern of Jeff Gordon's right now, Steve. It sure is, Mike. He just told the crew that the water temperature was up to 260 degrees, and they thought that it might cool down once the race restarted, but it has not. Jeff Gordon, very concerned about it. And I think that's been one concern about this new car. I think this is the first real challenge, Daryl, with the new front end openings down there above that splitter that Jeff Hammond talked about, keeping these things cool, especially with all that rubber going in there. I won't necessarily lay it on this car. I mean, it is a problem, I believe, to some degree, but that's a problem we've had here for years. Absolutely. Uh, new car, old car, the sand and the dirt and the debris here really packs the radiators. Once the thing starts to get hot, about all you can do is bring it down pit road and blow all that stuff out of the radiator. Another driver with a concern is Matt Kenseth's teammate, Jamie McMurray. And it's a strange one, Mike. Jamie McMurray's left arm has gone to sleep. It happened relatively early in the event, and he right now he's got that left, well, just came off the wheel. But he has been putting the left arm down, just letting it rest, trying to give it a break, trying to wake it up a little bit. Shades of Kevin Harvick a couple of years ago at Bristol. Now, the, the left arm is the most, I mean, your right hand, all you really use it for is sighting. You see him take his left hand off the steering wheel. You pull down really hard with your left hand, and your right hand here, all you're really doing is using that for a sight almost. That left one's where you do all the turning with, pulling down on the steering wheel, must be pulling it into the side of the seat and pinching a nerve under his arm. But I'd say the one thing that will keep him going, remember he qualified in the third spot. He's up there even after hitting the wall early in the race in the top 10 solid up there in the seventh spot. Another good run, Larry Carter, Jamie McMurray in this 26 car. And we're getting a report that Steve Latart, the 24 car, Jeff Gordon, just talked about his overheating, that they have brought their cool down machine to the pits. It's a machine through quick disconnects that they can cycle all the hot water out of the radiator and engine and put cool water back in should they feel the need to. Yeah, they're gonna have to make a call here before long. You cannot cook the engine. If you cook that engine, you're done for the day. Take a chance on losing a lap or so, at least you still finish the race. Jeff Hammond, what leads to overheating here? Mike, what we've been talking about, we know the rubber can go through the front grill. And what it eventually does, Mike, is this real fine rubber right here, as you see coming out of my hand, it gets into the radiator, into the fins. This is where the air goes through that actually cools the water. Once these fins get stopped up, all of a sudden the air is not flowing and the radiator is going to overheat. And if the 24 actually has an overheating problem, they may be able to cool the water down, but if they don't blow these uh, fins out of that number 24 car, it'll continue to overheat for the remainder of the race. Yeah, Jeff, what they might can do if they indeed raise the hood, if they feel the need to, is while they're cooling the water down with the, with the radiator cool-down machine, is take an air hose from the back side and blow the rubber back out of the fins of the radiator, possibly seen that happen numerous times here that overheating problem but uh, then dick we have another heating problem with uh, another car out there yeah and it's the leader matt kenseth we had talked earlier you guys had talked earlier larry did about how kenseth was having issues with his brakes and the problem really is that the brakes are just running too hot daryl uh they've taken all the tape off the brake ducts and trying to cool them down he's doing his best to not use the brakes but there is your leader not having as much brake as he would like I think the only folks that aren't having problems today are the fans. Even our NASCAR on Fox RoboCams are having a tough day with uh, some of the debris here at Darlington. Ken Schrader has pounded the wall in the Wood Brothers 21. He's gone to the garage, and the pits are open, Steve. And, Mike, the concern continues for Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. Water temperature still around 260 degrees. They're going to pull tape off as they do right now and work on that grill. Dick. 
Matt Kenseth pits as the leader said the car is perfectly balanced. Everything is just fine, except he really is concerned about getting into turn three because of his shortage of brakes. Another great stop. Good stop. Quest Ford is just a little bit free now that the sun is out. They asked if they wanted a, to tighten it up a little bit with a wedge adjustment. Greg said, no, let's just leave it alone for now. Matt? Jimmy Johnson's biggest issue is the exit of turn four. Just way too free. Needs help in the forward by the area. They made a chassis adjustment. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin, his car tight on early throttle. They made an air pressure change as well. Tell you what else they did. They made an attitude adjustment down there to that pit crew because he whooped one on them that time. He got out there pretty well. Big jump for Ryan Newman. Gains three spots. And once again, Matt Kenseth emerges from the pits as the race leader. Chris? Yep, that wasn't even close. <laughs> <laughs> the Dodge Avenger 500 on Fox is sponsored by UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR. UPS delivers the chance to manage your own free fantasy auto racing league. Go to foxsports.com. And here is why the caution flag came out moments ago. Twenty-one car right there. And uh, likely Jeff Hammers, you see the damage. Yeah, that's heavy damage right there on Kenny Schrader's car. It looked like he lost a right front internet turn and uh, has now taken that car to the garage. Sixth uh, caution of this race, 110 laps to go. So probably two more pit stops in theory. Yeah, and as we get later in the race, and everybody's going to get a little more aggressive, obviously. And this racetrack is still going through some transitions. So I know we're going to probably make at least two more stops. And then, you know, Larry McReynolds, everybody keeps talking about how important all these stops are. But each one is getting so important because of track position right now late in the race. And that position, Matt Kenseth leading Ryan Newman and Jeff Gordon for the moment. But there apparently is a problem with Matt Kenseth's car. Let's check in with uh, Dick. Well, there was a problem with Matt Kenseth's car, and it just happened before they made that pit stop, Chris. The problem? A right rear going down. I just put my foot against it, and I went right in. He couldn't have made it another lap without making an extra pit stop. And Matt Kenseth, the, uh, other than a Chevrolet, the only other car to win a race this year. Chevy has won nine of the ten races. A Kenseth in a Ford, uh, the loan to have success uh, that was not a Chevy. Yeah, that's true. And, and right now, this is his kind of race. He's uh, very methodical. His crew's doing a great job. But uh, I'd like to go back to that little parlay as we take a look at Robbie Reiser, crew chief for the uh, 17 car. And I saw a little parlay going on between Steve Letarte and the engine brain trust at uh, the 24 car so I think they're trying to figure out also about their heating situation as Steve is sitting there talking to uh, Jeff Andrews one of the head engine builders there uh, and trying to trying to figure out you know what are we going to do about this if we're taking the tape off doesn't help right, let's go back to the start of things today A 21 mom salute the mothers of some of the NASCAR drivers the Grand Marshal getting things started and early Clint Boyer led and then Carl Edwards and then Denny Hamlin working his way to the front the front I should say and then Brian Vickers having some problems that's not a Darlington stripe he was okay but take it out of the race for a while Tony Stewart running 13th at the time the tire goes down dropped to 31st a lap down just missed getting the free pass on this recent caution. Martin Truex Jr. getting that. Just missed right there. You see right there the five car of Kyle Busch trying to get the front grill open, get some repairs made, get some more air maybe into that cooling area for that car. And getting ready to go green. Mike? The 66 Jeff Green was on pit road at the same time doing the same thing as Kyle Busch. Martin Truex got the free pass. The other race off pit road, those among the lap cars, was won by Kevin Harvick ahead of Tony Stewart. So you see Harvick will be on the front row inside for the restart in the best position to get the next free pass. Number of cars appear to be having that heating problem we've been talking about. Now if the sun's out, the temperatures come up. It's really going to be borderline here these last several laps. 109 to go. Matt Kenseth, Ryan Newman, Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin, Jimmy Johnson lead them down for the green flag. I would say that 20 car, Tony Stewart, he's probably going to push the envelope here because he knows time's running out after having that flat tire we saw, trying to get back on the lead lap. And right now, we're looking back at the leader, so he's back on the lead lap. He needs a caution, needs it quickly. 
pretty good odds of him getting one too, Larry, with these cars bunched up. Handling is really going away on a lot of these cars. Track's getting slicker and it's been all day. I think my boys have awakened. You know, with Tony Stewart driving by our leader, Matt Kenseth, puts him back on the tail of the league lap. I want to give a call to another car that we've not talked about. Making his first start here, he qualified A.J. Allmendinger running one lap down. So if Tony can stay there, A.J. Allmendinger in that Red Bull 84 car, he would actually get the free pass. Not a bad run for this young man making his first start at Darlington. Let's see what the, the, the contact here on the restart between the 24 and the 12. Not sure what created this issue. See the 24 there. He runs into the back of the 12. Maybe he's trying to knock some of that debris out of his grill. I'm not oh, sure. Maybe. But, but, but Daryl, do you think maybe the 12 was like boxed in there behind think, the 17 and the 20 getting off into one? I think the 17 said, I'm going to let this 20 go because I know he's going to be fast. He rolled out a little earlier than probably Ryan expected. And Jeff tapped him. No harm. It's one thing. I, another thing I like about this new car is that the way the bumper and a rear bumper and front bumper line up, it didn't spin him out. It just shot him forward a little bit, kind of nerfed him. Carl Edwards is doing a good job of overcoming the problem he had earlier uh, that put him to the tail end of the pack after a penalty for missing the commit cone. There's Edwards, number 99. He has climbed back. I think he restarted 26th back then. He's in the top 10. Yeah, he's been doing a nice job. I've been watching him, and he did exactly what we said. He didn't panic. He hadn't taken any unnecessary chances. Pit crews helped him. Here he is back in the top 10. Yeah, that problem, it was only 80 laps ago, so this is quite a run back up through the field for Carl Edwards in the 99. No pressure, bud. Stay focused. See right there also Carl Edwards' teammate Greg Biffle in the 16 car. Remember, started out on the outside of the front row. Kind of fell backwards when this race started. Now Greg has actually found his way working back toward the top 10. Actually just got passed by Dale Earnhardt Jr. But Biffle right now trying to get that top 10 finished today. And there's our pole sitter, Clint Boyer. Scored his first career pole here at Darlington. One of eight drivers to do so. And he's been a lead lap car and a top 10 car most all day. It's been real quiet. He started from the pole, led a little bit, fell back, and hadn't heard a lot from him, but now he's back in the top 10. Quiet at Darlington's not a bad thing, right? No, that's exactly how you want to run this joint. We were trying to count under caution how many cars had been in the wall today, and we gave up. We decided we'd rather count how many cars have not. I think five have not. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Tell you what, Ryan Newman in this 12, I think they made some adjustments maybe, and uh, he's looking to take the lead back away from Matt Kenseth in the 17 car. What a great run for this 12 team, something they really, really needed. You mentioned the great run they had last week at Richmond as well. Newman has led twice today, once for two laps, and again for 17 laps, total of 19. Right behind them, the battle for third place is just as good. Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin behind our two leaders. And Jimmy Johnson has joined that fight. Three, four, and five. I believe that little scrape that uh, Denny Hamlin had with the wall, I believe it's a little wake-up call for him. Seemed like he has been a little bit more cautious ever since that happened. Not as anxious to sit out there and lead this thing like he was earlier. Gordon going a, or going to lose the spot to Jimmy Johnson. Johnson made a run on him at turn two. Jeff shut him down. No chance here at turn four. And Jimmy moves up into fourth place. You know, we talked about this ever-changing racetrack and how, how the sun's popped up. Trust me, there's not a better group that does a better job at adjusting. Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson. Matt Kenseth and Ryan Newman and Denny Hamlin, Ford, Dodge, and Chevy at Darlington. You gotta want it.
the Dodge Avenger 500. Hot Fox is sponsored by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horn. Dodge. By Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Eating good in the neighborhood. By E-Trade. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. And by Nextel, only from Sprint, helping NASCAR Nextel Cup fans get more done. 94 laps to go in the Dodge Avenger 500 in Darlington County, and the Dodge of Ryan Newman is out in front of the pack. He leads Denny Hamlin by eight-tenths of a second. We've had a change of first and a change of second. First, let's show you how Ryan Newman got the lead. I think if you're having brake issues, you're going to ease it in the turn just a little bit soft. Looks like that's what Kenza did. Ryan was able to drive right under him. I think Kent's is rolling out a little early, taking care of those brakes. And we're also getting a report that Matt Kenseth is actually complaining about his car being just a little bit loose right now, too. That'll make you back off. Yeah, early. loose in, and you saw, you know, like the 12 and the 11 both took advantage of that getting into one. Look at that orange 20. He's the quickest car on the racetrack, Tony Stewart. You see he has a lot of distance on the blue number 12, the race leader. Brian Newman and Jeff Gordon going past there in the 24. The report is the car is no longer overheating. Whatever had attached itself to the screen at the splitter that gets air to the radiator has dropped off. And Gordon's engine temperature is okay. Yeah, I saw you can see, look, right there, they took a big piece of tape off of that thing last time in, and it's really helped it. His teammate Jimmy Johnson now has moved into third place. He's passed Matt Kenseth, Matt Yoakum. And as the laps wind down, Jimmy Johnson looking ahead to the finish. He told Chad Canals the car is early. At least it gets tight early in this run. But Chad told him, just be patient because the sun is out. It's getting hotter and hotter. And that should help free you up a little bit. And that's called Chad doing what Daryl talks about, anticipation, because we know Good job, bud. 20 on the leader. we're getting down possibly only one, maybe two more pit stops, depending on caution. So these last adjustments, Matt Yoakum talked about it earlier, they've got to be on the mark for that last run. Fourth place. A Matt. car, a car snug. If, if, if it's snug, that's okay. Where you crank on the wheel, maybe it doesn't turn immediately, but it does turn. That's what you really want. What you don't want is when you turn it and it just keeps on going straight. Then you got a problem. We'll have at least one more pit stop, though, to make corrections. Yeah, you know, everybody was on pit road at lap 256. By my calculations, if we stay green, they're going to be back on there between 310 and 315. That will actually get them to the end of the race. But going back to Tony Stewart, the 20, you see, see Steve Letarte, Jeff Gordon's crew chief. But back to the 20 car, he's got the fastest car. Right now, he's back on the lead lap, the tail end of the lead lap. But he has to get a caution pretty quick if he wants to get back into this thing. We saw how long it took Carl Edwards to get his way back to the front. It took him about 80 laps. Right now, we have 88 laps to go. Stewart needs a caution pretty quickly. He does, and i tell you why. I think he's run the goodie off his tires a little, little uh, already because Ryan Newman is clipping him. He's coming back on him about a tenth or so a lap. Denny Hamlin's putting a little pressure on Newman. So uh, Stewart's going to have to watch his mirror because they're going to catch him back here in a minute. Kurt Busch trying to get back to the top five along with his uh, Roger Penske Dodge teammate Ryan Newman who leads this race. Tell you what, I got, you got, we mentioned this earlier, but you got to give a tip of the hat to these Penske boys. They have turned things around. Uh, of course, got to say hi to Roger too up there at Indy. Uh, Helio wins the uh, pole for the Indy 500. And uh, the stock car boys are, are responding equally as well. Yep, fifth and sixth last week at Richmond as you watch from our Goodyear aerial coverage. Official tire of NASCAR, Goodyear, get there. And you know, as we watch Kurt Busch there in the two car, just remember his crew chief that he started the season with was with him last year, Roy McCauley, is at home with his wife who's recovering, trying to recover from, from cancer. And right now, interim crew chief Troy Raker looking after this car for Roy. And, and Troy's been doing a well of a job with this group. Troy coming out of the chassis engineering department, stepping in for Roy. They are the only two Dodges in the top 15. 
We told the Roger Penske was in Indianapolis yesterday and flew down last night to Darlington. He's up on the roof watching his two drivers go at it today. He and Chip Ganassi, I love it. They might be in Spain or Portugal and then fly back home and watch the cars running for you know wherever the stock cars are running the next day. Uh, they are Indy. They're everywhere. That's my kind, that, that's my kind of guys. That's the way I'd like to be able to live. The last win for Penske Racing in NASCAR, Bristol, Tennessee, March 2006. That was uh, Kurt Busch's famous Snow Angel victory. Twenty three cars on the lead lap as Dale Jr. moves into eighth. Tell you what, we talked about Tony Stewart won't be caution. I guarantee you that yellow car right there, Matt Kent's at the 17. We got the report a while ago, his car is getting loose. <laughs> Definitely needs a caution to tighten that thing up. I think maybe they made an adjustment to free him up. Now the sun's out, the weather's changed, track's a little warmer, and it is play, it's backfired on him. Everybody has team engineers, Larry. Anybody have team weathermen? <laughs> There's a few times I wished I did, <laughs> including right here. 83 laps to go. Half a straightaway ago, Denny Hamlin just retook the lead from Ryan Newman. And Jimmy Johnson closes in. Here's the pass going off into turn three. All starts coming out of turn two. Get that good run off of there. And man, you know you're you know you're had when you get about halfway down the straightaway. You might as well let that guy go so you don't hold both of you up or mess both of you up. Yeah. Ryan looked to the bottom for the old cross under move, Darrell, but no, nah, not in three and four. You can't do yeah. it there. One and two, yeah, maybe, but uh, there goes Jimmy Johnson by Ryan Newman. Yeah, this 48 car, he's pretty good on this long run. We're about 20 laps away from what could be our last green flag stop. This 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, they're coming to life right now. And Jimmy Johnson, you keep digging, buddy. Carl Edwards trying to work his way back to the front. Carl led 33 laps today. He's up to seventh place, but he's had some close calls. That's why today the 99 Carl Edwards is our all-state good hands driver. He is on the throttle as Reed Sorensen gets in the wall, and Carl drops to the bottom and gets away. All-state will donate $1,000 to the Urban Youth Racing School. All-state official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. Are you in good hands? My spotter uh, some time ago was Brad Nosslinger, old sprint car guy, you know, open wheel guy. He, that's all he used to say, keep digging, boss, keep digging. So when Christmas, when Christmas, he gave me a shovel, a gold plated <laughs> shovel for Christmas. <laughs> Krista? Well, Daryl was talking about the sacrifices that the racing wives make by having all the crew members, the drivers here on Mother's Day. We just want you to know that they are eating well. Moms, we do not want you to worry. I know they're planning on taking you out for a Mother's Day meal, but instead, down here in the 16 pit, well, they're dining on donuts and M&Ms, and don't forget the uh, Butterfingers. So don't worry, Mom. They're eating well. Here with about 74 laps to go. One more pit stop, possibly. Got any Twinkies down there? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Craig Biffle moving on AJ Allmendinger, who is the first car one lap down. Biffle's number 16 is 10th. He's the fourth Ford in the race, and all four of them are Roush Fenway cars. There goes Jimmy Johnson, that 48 car car actually got a little bit loose right there, right in the middle of three and four, but he's going to the low side, trying to get this lead from Denny Hamlin. I guess that little bag of tricks down there, that it gives a whole new meaning to goodies, doesn't it? Looks about like the bag we've got up here. <laughs> Not the headache pound, no, that's what, no. <laughs> A couple of goodies. <laughs> Wouldn't go over too good. You know, Jimmy Johnson must have a, some kind of dial, maybe a sand dial or a, 
I don't know, some kind of clock it sets in there and kind of runs and ticks. And when it starts to get down near the end of the race, it, it he kicks into overdrive. Time to go. Time to go. <laughs> His teammate now, Casey Mears, started in 11th position. We talked about him earlier in this 25 car. And this is a crew chief's nightmare, Darian Grubb. The last run, you can see him sliding off the corner. They made an adjustment on the car, Matt Yoakum was telling me, based on how the car was driving. After they made the adjustment, he left pit road. They found he had a tire going down, so they adjusted to a tire, and, and that's one thing that's getting them off sync right here, trying to work his way back to the top 10 and 13th right now. That was a real good choice of words. Crew chiefs and nightmares, they definitely go together. <laughs> so Casey's feedback was based on a soft tire, but they didn't know that until after they'd made the change. Exactly. Ooh. When he left pit road, they found the tire that was down, but the adjustments had already been made. Now they're trying to readjust to it here, again, with one more stop to go possibly, which is going to come here probably in the next 10 to 15 laps. Here Jimmy we go. Johnson here we go, the lead. Jimmy looking low. Lapped car as a pick. That is Montoya. Jimmy J in his Chevrolet looking pretty good here. Something flapping on the right of Montoya's car. Not sure if it's a piece of tape or a bit of the fender. Right now, Montoya back in the 25th position in his 42 car, two laps down, making oh, his tape. first start. Sorry, there it's tape, piece of bear bond they put on the right front of Montoya's car. Well, how are you going to get around? Are you going to go high? Are you going to go low? And are you going to lose the lead in the process, Denny Hamlin? Let's see. Well, I tell you, if this uh, Montoya doesn't get out of the way, then he really tried to make a run on him off of turn four, but Montoya was able to stay there. Looking here, maybe do the crossover. No, it's just not enough grip to do the cut under, but here comes Jimmy. And Jimmy used the 42 car as a pick. Yeah. Trapped what happened? the 11 car behind the 42. Yeah, and I think he may have made a little contact, and here's the 12. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. This is typical Darlington. Three car battle for the lead with 68 laps to go. Yeah. And Jeff Gordon closing in. When you saw it, did you see what uh, Jimmy did to the 11 down here in turn one? He did the crossover move on him. But that was because the 11 lost a little momentum. Jimmy timed it right. He anticipated and made the move. From the Goodyear blimp, Johnson to the lead. Hamlin crossing back under. And Newman right there. Hello, Newman. I like it. And it says, you know, it, it's so hard to race on this racetrack and run side by side and pass people. I don't know how guys do it. It's amazing. But they're about to do it because we're just about to the end of this thing. We'll be back for pit stops. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. The Dodge Avenger 500 on Fox is sponsored by the new chicken and biscuit bowl. Dig into great layers of flavor with KFC. By Direct TV, just say ride shotgun on race day with NASCAR Hot Pass only on Direct TV. By Degree Men, more power than you need. One day you'll need it. And by Warner Brothers' new motion picture, Ocean's 13, in theaters Friday, June 8. Caution out for the seventh time. AJ Allmendinger got in the wall. Kyle Busch got into him. And it must have been pretty serious when you see a cool spring rolling down the racetrack. Kyle Busch was a victim on that one. Both cars heavy damage. Steve? Jim Gordon still somewhat concerned about the hot temperatures. They may pull some more tape off the nose of that number 24, Mike. Definitely four tires. Tape comes off. Let's go to Dick. Ryan Newman dropped from first place to fifth place with the car that got increasingly loose on that run. So they're going to make an adjustment and try to return him to the speed that he previously had. To Matt. Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlin complaining of both the same thing. The car just way too tight, making a track bar adjustment on both cars to try to free them up and also slight air pressure adjustments. Let's go back to Krista. Greg Biffle says his car is tight, loose, tight, loose, but about the best it's been all day. So they're going to leave it alone except for tires and gas. Crew chief Pat Trison said the sun is helping them. 24 car had a pretty good stop. You see Steve Letart in that group, they get him out there, he gains a position. He goes out second behind his teammate Jimmy Johnson. 20 car got back on the lead lap. Caution was a big break for Tony Stewart. Both Almendinger and Bush able to continue were under caution. Crank it up, Jim. 
Jeff Hamlin, Chris Myers back at the Hollywood Hotel under caution, 60 laps to go. And Denny Hamlin, who has met, led more laps today than in any other Nextel Cup race in his career, 180 and counting, having problems again in the pits. Had problems in pits, and you know, Larry McCrell was talking about fumbling. Take a look on the right front. All of a sudden, you see the Jack man. He's waiting on Donnie Brown, the front tire changer. You see him drop a lug nut. Oh, guess what? He drops it again. But he's got to get all of Muller because NASCAR is watching. So in the process of getting it right, they lost a lot of valuable spots. Now he's got to fight his way back up to the front with just 59 laps to go. Well, as Larry McReynolds said when he talked to Rick Hendrick, when somebody else fumbles, we're there to step in, meaning Hendrick Motorsports. And look, they had led just one lap previously until Jimmy Johnson got back up to the front. It's Jimmy Johnson, uh, Jeff Gordon, even though they've been in the top 10, the Hendrick cars, for much of the day. They have been in the top 10, but it, like he said, when they make a mistake, they step through. Now, it's Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Ford. Let's rejoin DW Larry Mike. And when you get the 48 car in the front with 59 laps to go, what do you think will happen? He'll just step on out. He'll be we'll checking see. on out. Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, then the Dodges of teammates Kurt Busch and Ryan Newman. The Ford of Carl Edwards is up to fifth. Clint Boyer, the pole sitter, sixth. And the Fords of Jamie McMurray, Greg Biffle, seventh and eighth, then Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Chevy, and Matt Kenseth's Ford, your top ten. Working just out of the top ten, Mark Martin. But I'll tell you this, too. He may not be alone when he steps out because his teammates right there, and he's pretty good here, as we well know. You know, looking at that two and a 12 car, both of Penske. Penske Racing has never had a 1-2 finish in a race. Let's see what Jeff Gordon does here on this restart. They've got to clear Montoya, who has gone a lap down. Yeah, Montoya has really been a handful to get around. I mean, he doesn't just move out of the way. Uh, he's pretty, pretty aggressive, even when he's a lap down. Well, Montoya really held up Denny Hamlin. He didn't so much hold up Jimmy Johnson. Might have been a little mirror concentration there. His opinion is, I came here to race. Not to ride. Not, that's right. I don't let anybody buy. The thing about it, he's actually two laps down, but he's racing about eight other cars. We don't even have a car that's a lap down, but we have eight to nine cars that are two laps down from Montoya all the way back to Kevin Harvick, who's in 30th. Now, we might want to keep a little eye on the 12, who will be coming up on the 42 here very shortly. They got a little thing going on. A little history together. Yeah. Casey Kane in the nine is also two laps down. Now he is battling Montoya for the right to the next free pass. And I want you to probably watch the difference between Casey Kane and Montoya. Casey knows that Ryan is on the lead lap, running, trying to get the lead. Watch Casey probably move out of the way. Go ahead, Ryan. Now let's see how the 42 reacts. You can see how much ground Casey Kane gave up to the 42 car of Montoya. Now Carl Edwards will clear Casey Kane in the nine. Carl in the 99, making it back to the top five after that problem a little over 100 laps ago on the commitment coming violation. Oh, back straightaway, Tony Raines in a cloud of dust. And a hardy high O silver. Yeah, he's going to get the DLP car to pit road. But he has torn it up. No caution. You know, one thing we have not mentioned, uh, and we've seen no problems so far, but all of the Joe Gibbs cars, all, right, we're done. all of the Joe Gibbs cars, it, it also including Tony Raines in that 96 car, they are racing the new Chevrolet R07 engine here. And that, didn't, uh, that didn't sound too good for that one. Said we were done, so it sounded like there was something pretty terminal. There's where the Joe Gibbs cars are. And a tire rub on David Reagan on the left front there, that number six. And Stewart scoots on past. David Reagan's gotten uh, bumped around quite a bit today. But you know what? He just uh, does that a lot, but he keeps on going. He's been the highest finishing rookie in five races. Not and, doing a bad job for a rookie. And he's been running at the finish in every race this year. So, Jeff? 
Mike, my biggest question right now, Mike, has to be the fact that, you know, we started that restart on 309, and, you know, a lot of guys made earlier pit stops. Well, but, Larry Mack, it almost puts you at the max as far as what your window is on fuel and tires. If this thing goes green, we're liable to find out who's barely hanging on by a thread by the end of it, and if we happen to have to go have a caution, you know, what are we going to do here, buddy? Are we going to, you know, try to slow down, pace ourselves, make it to the end, or, you know, we're going to just kind of like let the rough side drag? And, and, Jeff, I think with where the pace is going, they're going to be fine on fuel because they made that pit stop with 62 laps to go. There were some cautions in there. But, yeah, I think the fine line is going to be not having any tire issues and being good on this long run should we go to the end. Hey, Darrell, the key thing right now, you're the driver right now. Are you going to be up there trying to save your tires thinking about the guy slowing down? or are you going to be out there driving the wheels off of it? Well, you know, if I'm Jimmy Johnson, I look in my mirror and I see the guys won six races here, I can't slow down if I want to win. If I want to run second, I can. I'm going to drive it as hard as I can, Jeff, and hope for the best outcome here because uh, I can't slow down. I got two cars behind me. Two's back there, twelve's back there. They're all within striking distance. I got to stay up on the wheel and keep digging. Tell you another guy that's up on the wheel and keep digging. We'll get back to him here in a minute, I'm sure, because he keeps closing in. It's a guy that hadn't talked about. I don't think we've mentioned his name all day long. Mark Martin. Mark Just restarted 11th. He's now running 10th. 19 cars. Excuse me, 22 cars are on the lead lap. There's a look at Mark Martin in the Army Chevy, who's now broken into the top 10. And he is one of the cars that you notice doesn't have any stripes on the side of it. That's right. Got all his slider stripes on his sleeves. Finished second in the bush race on Friday night. Well, most everybody has bounced off or gotten into the wall today. There are 22 cars on the lead lap, and that includes Johnny Sauter, who's uh, having a strong run in the yellow transportation car. But Krista, what did he tell his team about it encountering the wall today? Yeah, because he got on his radio and told his crew chief, Booty Barker, um, guys, I'm describing my car as hitting the wall, quote, 84 times. <laughs> In other words, he, 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 I think he's lost count of how many times he's actually hit the wall. I got to tell you, though, and we've said this early on, I say it again, these cars have surprised me as to how they can get into the wall, and it doesn't seem to affect them at all. They just keep on going. See a couple of teammates there battling each other. Matt Kenseth in the 17, Greg Biffle in the 16. They're battling for eighth. Right now, they've got a rearview mirror full of a guy I know that's not going to be taking it easy, trying to overcome that bad pit stop, Denny Hamlin, and that 11 car there. He knows the clock is ticking to the end of this race now. See, when you can turn under a car like he did Biffle, that's that's a crossover move. But see, he waves at Biffle and says, thank you very much. Once you get that inside line coming off of turn two, the guy on the outside has got to let you go or he'll wreck. He'll slide out and hit the wall. So if you can get position in the middle of one and two, you can generally make the pass. Whoa, Mark Martin in the 01 car gets sideways. He may have gotten a little help from a guy we talked about earlier, Sterling Marlin in that 14, having a great run in this Gin car. Yeah, they're racing for position, and uh, they are teammates, aren't they? And because of that bobble off Ooh. of turn four. Sorry, Larry, but Montoya just sliced down in front of Hamlin again. I thought before when Hamlin had trouble lapping the 42, it was because Montoya was trying to stay on the lead lap. Now I think it's more mirror driving. I think this may be something stemmed from the Bush race Friday night. I'm not sure what this is all about. Yeah, because now Mon Montoya is not even in position to get one of those laps back because Casey Kane in the nine is the first car that's one or more laps down. And this time he lets Hamlin go. Let's take a look back at what happened with Mark Martin in the 01 and, and Sterling Marlin in the 14. This was coming off turn four. Again, they're battling for position here. And you'll see Mark gets a little loose and I think Sterling may have got into him just a little bit then got off of him that was a battle for position but because of that right there Mark actually lost a couple more positions one being the Casey Mears in that 25 car Mark right now is regrouping saying man is there something wrong with my car because uh, apparently he just I, I don't think I don't think Sterling got into him I think he just got real bad loose off the corner there and it's kind of really bothered him looks like yeah he continues to lose positions he just lost another position or two to Martin Truex Jr. the one who just got a free pass while ago and then Tony Stewart in the 20, who just got back on the lead lap. You know what Mark Martin does? He drives his car up there. He was coming toward the front. He was in the top 10. Maybe he was overdriving it a little bit, and he realized it. Now he says, I'm going to go back to driving it to what it's, what it's got, not trying to overdo it. One of the things we talked about at the top of the show. You know, if Tony Stewart makes it to the top 10, and I think he might, it'll be the hardest fought 10th place he's ever had. 
in Nextel Cup. Long way from the back to the front. You know, Bobby Labonte, I thought would have a really good day here. This is a Bobby Labonte kind of racetrack. And the Cheerios Dodge spent a lot of the day on the lead lap, but then it fell off. Now it's back on the lead lap. And Bobby is 17th for Richard Petty. Behind the wheel, only three of Petty's 200 victories came here at Darlington. Bobby had a really hard crash here Friday night in that bush race. Uh, hard lick here on the front straightaway, so looks like he didn't have any ill effects from that. That's another car that's had a good solid run all day long. The other Joe Gibbs car we've not talked about a lot, J.J. Yaley in this 18 car. He actually ran the USAC race here on Thursday night, pretty much was walking the dog and lost an engine, ran the bush race, sitting here solidly up in the top 20, J.J. Yaley. How about Jeff Burton in the uh, singular 31? Came in here, top five in points. He will maintain that position. But it's been kind of a quiet day for Burton. Top 15 or so most of the day, but never a, not a threat for the front. Yeah, I talked to Jeff yesterday morning, and he said they just they never had really got his car in practice like he was looking. He's just trying to see the checkered flag because he was involved in the crash at Talladega, lost the engine at Richmond, went into Talladega second to points. They're just trying to get back to finishing races with this 31. Hadn't had the best performance out of the new car either, though, Larry. Wasn't very good at Phoenix. Uh, blew up at Richmond, so we don't know how good he'd been there. They don't seem to have their uh, arms around this car like they do the uh, the current car. And just real quickly, I know I basically made the statement last week at Richmond when he lost the engine that they had some engine problems where they dropped something in the engine in Friday. We questioned why they didn't change it. I did talk to that group. The engine failure was not even related to what happened on Friday. Do want to clean that up. Dave Blaney and the uh, Cat Camry for Bill Davis Racing, hopeful of getting into the top 35 in owner points so that next time around when we go to Charlotte, he would be locked into the field and not have to qualify on time. So let's update our danger zone. Top 35 owners exempt right now. Ricky Rudd, 32nd in the race. He would hold on to that 35th place in the points. In the next Hill Cup standings, Blaney would remain 30s, or he climbed to 36. He'd climb up one spot because Scott Riggs did not make this race, but Blaney would not be able to get into the top 35 based on where he is running right now, which is 20th. It's a fight every week. It just it, I've talked to these guys week in and week out that are not locked in. It said they just have to approach the weekend different. One guy told me there's a wall in this garage area. The top 35 on one side of the wall, and we're on the other. We're racing each other. Jimmy Johnson goes past, and Jeff Gordon. They are three seconds ahead of Kurt Busch, Brian Newman, and Carl Edwards. Next stop, Victory Lane. In the L Series, in Chicago debris in turn number four has put us under caution for the eighth time today and that evaporates Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon's lead see if all the lead cars come into pit road this time Steve Mike on the last stop tire carrier Mike Houston tried to get that tape off the front Jeff Gordon's engine looked like it's running hot right now they're going to try and get the tape again on this stop Jeff said we won't make it if we don't get that tape off this time, they do. Dick. Ryan Newman pits out of the fourth position. They're going to make a minor chassis adjustment to loosen the car up. They are hoping that's going to bring him a little bit more speed, which he needs if he is to win this race. To Matt. Kurt Busch follows Jimmy Johnson down Pier Road. Busch says, we've got a great third place car. Let's just finish the day and come home with a stellar run. They're going to make a track bar adjustment. The car still too tight. Meanwhile, for Jimmy Johnson, small air pressure change, and he's away. Great stop by the Lowe's guys. Boy, he just made it out, Matt, because look at this crowd coming double wide behind them. Larry. Wow. Jeff Gordon will never make it. The car is running too hot. It's got steam pouring out of it. Yeah, with 32 laps to go. But I tell you, all of those crews stepped it up. I mean, they were so even with their pit stops. It's like nobody had a big advantage or disadvantage. I thought Jeff Gordon had the car to win this race with, but now I'm not sure with that. Flip, brother, it's going to make it or not. I said we go out, get all we can. If we come in, we're going to be, yeah, I don't know, 25th or something on the lead lap. 
And you could almost see all of the tape is gone off yeah. of the nose. I mean, there's nothing else they can do as far as that. Well, they tried to get that right side piece of tape earlier, and the tire carrier tried to grab it, couldn't get it. Jeff took off. Yeah. This time, they do have that grill clear. That's just too much. Yeah, it, it won't quit. Uh, and when it's doing that, I mean, I know these things have systems in them that they can run them hotter than we're uh, probably accustomed to, 260 maybe. But when it's steaming like that, that's not a good sign at all, as we well know. It has improved, as you can see. And maybe you can get some enough air in there, and who knows? Gordon it's uh, it's Gordon tough. Temperature. Still have temperature. Jeff Gordon has finished on the lead lap. No the first. First 10 races of 2007. You heard the chirp. It's time for our next tell getting it done call of the race. Well, I'm going with the 24 car. I know what you're going to go with, Larry. I'm going to go with this that 12 car right there. Ryan Newman, uh, Mike Nelson, the new crew chief for that car this year. They have not had a top five finish at an oval with this 12 since Daytona of February of last year. Hit the wall qualifying, qualified 29th up in the top five. They've been getting it done all weekend, just like Nextel. Well, I'm going to go with the 24 for the very obvious reason. If they can get this thing to the finish, they got a little tape off, helped it, got a little more off then. If they can get it to the finish, that'd be a great job. I'm going with Tony Jr., Tony Urey Jr., and the crew of that Budweiser number eight. With all of the media attention and focus that's been on them, Dale Jr.'s leaving. Oh, whoa, what'll happen to DEI and the number eight team? What did they do after Thursday's announcement? And Dale went to DEI and talked to them on Thursday before he made his public announcement. They dug deep. They brought him a great car. He's been top 10 all day. He's got great pit stops. They're going to get him into this chase and try to get him a championship while he's still there. They definitely got it done on that pit stop. Those yep. guys were on their mark that time. Well, it's one to go, boys, and we're getting here ready for us a little shootout, a little Darlington shootout. They will take the green with 30 laps to go. And Dave Blaney stayed out and led a lap. I believe that's the first lap that a Toyota has led with the new car. But remember, we talked about his fight just a while ago, trying to get to the top 35 in owner points. Those five points could be so special for Dave Blaney. Now he'll restart deep in the pack now that he's made that pit stop. But Blaney continues on the lead lap. Casey Kane got the uh, free pass that time. In two weeks, NASCAR on Fox heads to Charlotte under the lights Sunday, May 27th. We start in twilight, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Jimmy Johnson, five wins, 10 top 10s in the last 11 races at Lowe's Motor Speedway. He calls it his house. Whose will it be? Mike, I tell you, every car that's going down pit road right now is steaming. They got every car coming down pit road is hot. Look back, look back in there. Ooh, Montoya just got man, he got nailed into the wall. the wall. But all these cars are coming down pit road with steam coming out the overflow there in front of the windshield. David Rudiman's is on pit road now with the hood up and a lot of steam out the overflow. And, and as Daryl pointed out, this has always been a problem here with with the rubber going up in the radiator openings. But the radiator openings on this new car, they're down there in an area that's the highest pressure area of this nose picks up a lot of rubber, a lot of debris. See the 40 car to the right of our screen there. He's steaming out. There's another a number of other cars back in there same way, but we're going to go racing. to go who will make it to the finish line and our top two I mean they cleared the lap traffic in a hurry now Ryan Newman is boxed in behind they're gonna go three wide down the back straight away Newman will clear him going off into turn three and that took a little discipline on Kevin Harvick's part nice move tell you what though these two guys up front here the 48 and the 24 guys I believe if that 24 doesn't blow up or get too hot Big Daddy is on the prowl. <laughs> he is in waiting, isn't he? Wow. What a gaggle right there, Dick. Matt Kens is having trouble busting out of traffic. Yeah, but the reason he's in traffic is that he had an incredible pit stop. He came into the pits in ninth position. Right now, Mike, he is running in fourth spot. But they asked how fast you could do a pit stop in one of these new cars. That was a sub-12 second by Kenseth's guys for four tires and a chassis adjustment. And Dick, Matt, Mike, and Daryl and I sat down with Matt Kenseth and asked him about his pit crew. And Robbie Riser, the crew, chief is one of the few crew chiefs he still worked for the pit crew most teams they have a pit crew trainer the crew chief don't even go near the pit crew Robbie Riser's there for every one of these guys practice hands-on crew chief Robbie Riser 
I have to put Robbie in the blue collar crew chief category. He is a hard worker, hands on. Here's Robbie Riser. Been with Matt Kenseth ever since his, since his rookie year back in 2000. A racer. I mean, the guy's a racer. He's driven. He's driven his own cars. He's he's a, just an all-round, rounded crew chief. Knows it all. Right now, though, Matt Kenseth had his hands full of Kurt Busch in that two car, but Kurt will take that fourth spot away. And there you see Dale Earnhardt Jr. moving into the picture as well. Robbie Reiser and Matt Kenseth used to race against each other in Wisconsin late models before coming south. He did tell us that he was kind of like a bull in a china shop a little bit, though. Robbie Reiser. I'll tell you one thing, oh, dear, oh, June Bug, he was on the apron, and he looked like back in the old days. He had the whole car down on the apron trying to get around Matt Kenseth. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. He was driving her down there. Something's happened to Casey Mears. Oh, he's smoking. David Rudiman back in the Stay pits. The the Overheating, bottom. hood up. Casey Mears falling out of the ah. race. Boy, that's tight right there, Junior and uh, Kenseth. They are going oh, at it, uh, man. You, I'm telling you, in uh, the yep. 11 car, there were about Caution. five of them. Debris, for debris turns one and two, and that may what, have what's been this from right here, Casey Mears. What, what, this is what, what I was on about. Junior got in the back of the 17. Then Boyer, and here comes the 99 and the 11. I mean, they were coming off there in a wad. I tell you who really does not like these cautions because it seems like well, that's when they're having the most problem running the hottest without air going through the up front end is Jeff Gordon at 24. I thought you were going to say the people who have Mother's Day dinner on the table getting cold <laughs> and yeah, waiting for this to be over. Steve. Hey guys, that's exactly right. Jeff Gordon says the moment he slows down, the water pressure shoots back up. He wants this race, he wants it to stay under green. When it when he accelerates, it gets out there in basically clean air, he's fine. He doesn't like these caution laps. Steve looks pretty, that's Steve Latard, his crew chief. He looks pretty calm right now, though. He doesn't seem to be panicking, and that's good. I think that's pretty good news. Matt, what happened to Casey Mears? Well, Mike, he was trying to rebound from that earlier flat tire, but he says, I've got oil pressure, I have no water pressure, and it's not running well. Mm. See, that's the other thing that can happen to you, unbeknownst to the driver. You can lose all your water. You look at your gauge, you say, well, my gauge is okay. The reason it's okay is there's no water in there to read off of. There, that looks like an exhaust pipe down uh, between turns one and two that's put us under caution. Well, boys, it's been about five laps in that restart. We got a little cat and mouse going on. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 came to pit road. His teammate, Jeff Gordon in the 24, and Newman in the 12 stayed out. Looks like about a split decision with just five laps on those tires right there. Boy, I think I'd have stayed out that time. I know that the tires are important, but track position, mm -mm -mm. So Johnson elects to leave the lead and come to pit road, Matt. Even with 23 laps to go, Mike, fresh tires here, especially sticker tires, mean everything. And that's exactly why the 40, as well as the two of Kurt Busch, Bush, he wants to free it up some more. That's one more shot to the finish. Great run, though, by both the, the two and the 48 teams. Dick? Well, Ryan Newman was told to follow, do what the 24 did. That's exactly what he did. Newman stayed out. You know, of all the cars you think would have pitted under this caution, Jeff Gordon sitting there spewing water, don't you think they would have come in and tried to cool it down? I think there's nothing they can do. Uh, I think they've decided we're going to, you know, we're going to run it. If it blows up, it blows up. You'll see right here now, you'll see the 48 car pull down to pit. Looks like the 24 is going to go with him, but he got back out on the racetrack before that commitment cone that Carl Edwards did not get back earlier in the race. From the Goodyear blimp, here's how it looked. Boy, you can see that steam pouring out of that 24 car. That just can't last. I don't know if that can last to the end of the race or not. And it was just reported the 12 stayed right in the tire tracks <laughs> of Jeff Gordon. You notice Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight stayed out as well. It's got to last 22 more laps. Steve. 
Yeah, Mike, just listening to Jeff Gordon and Steve Letard, Jeff said water is spewing out of this thing. I don't know if it's going to make it. Uh, also want to point out that when the caution came out, Steve Letard said, stay out, stay out. I've been wrong before. I may be wrong now, but let's stay out. And Jeff Gordon never questioned his decision. He has total confidence in his young crew chief. Now, Steve, his best friends may be those other cars that stayed out. We talked about Ryan Newman, Dale Earnhardt Jr., but Sterling Marlin, Mark Martin, and Martin Truex Jr. also stayed out. So there's several cars between the 24 and the 48 right now. So Jeremy, Jim, tell you, with uh, his situation and uh, everything the way it is, I'd have stayed out too. I think that's a great call. I think that's going to really pay off. Jimmy Johnson, the first car out of the pits, will restart seventh. He's out front. He's going to have clean air. That's going to be real crucial to getting that thing to stay cool, cool enough to make it to the end. Darlington Raceway has seen a lot of changes over 57 years, including a change in how you race here. Initially, they raced on the apron and the safety area was the banking. Then they moved up, found it was faster on the banking, except when it wasn't, and they raced on the banking and on the apron. Whatever gets you there first. And the man who was first the most was the Silver Fox, David Pearson. Ten victories here. Dale Earnhardt had nine. Jeff Gordon working on what could be his seventh. I always wonder when I the first time I said, why is the apron so wide? Why do they got so much apron here? And they said, you're not old enough to understand. <laughs> and I'm sure there's probably some more guys that are not old enough to understand. And there's Ramsey's Minnow Pond. The reason that what is now turns three and four is tighter radius than turns one and two. Couldn't build the racetrack right up to the Minnow Pond. Yeah, John and Jim Ramsey own the Diamond Hill Plywood Company here. They sponsor the Bush Race, and that was their grandfather that, that owned that pond right there. Let's set you for this restart. We have 20 laps to go. Jeff Gordon, who came in here as the point leader, is the race leader in his DuPont Chevrolet, which is overheating. Boy, Ryan he's... Newman trying to break a long drought to victory lane in the Penske Alltel Dodge is second. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Budweiser Chevy for DEI third. Sterling Marlin for Ginn Racing. In the waste management, Chevy is fourth. Mark Martin, another Ginn car, the Army Chevrolet fifth. Nice job by Martin Truex to fight his way back up in the top ten. He is sixth in the Bass Pro Shop Chevy from DEI. Jimmy Johnson, the first car out of the pits on this caution. The low Chevy is seventh. Matt Kenseth, the DeWalt Ford, is eighth. Clint Boyer, the pole sitter. The Jack Daniels Chevy is ninth, and Denny Hamlin in the FedEx Chevy is tenth. Here we go, 19 laps to race. What you got to watch out for is a bunch of cars getting together back in here. When you're this late in the race, a few of them on new tires, a few of them on old tires, it's usually a little bit of a disaster. Daryl, I'm not so sure that Jeff Gordon didn't make a smart move there. Let Kevin Harvick go. He's two laps down. I'm not going to sit here and fight him. And because Jimmy Johnson right now, he's backed up by a bunch of lap cars back there in that 48 car. Yeah, but if I was Jeff, I'd want that clean air, man. I'd want all the air I could get on my grill. I wouldn't want anybody in front of me throwing anything up in front of me, making it worse. And I'm just a little concerned about this little bit of traffic back in here. I am definitely concerned about this gaggle of cars. This is desperate guys here with 18 laps to go. Desperate people do desperate things and that's what we're seeing here. It's starting to shape up that way. Good job, buddy. Good job. I know we're riding with Jeff Burton. You should have just seen the move that Matt Kenseth just made over there. Three wide in turn two to clear Montoya and Sterling Marlin in that 14 car. Kenseth up to six, three wide again. There's that apron. They're using it today. <laughs> you said <laughs> and race there like for a long old, time. Look just like that old footage. <laughs> they did. Oh, we got who blew David up? Streamy in the 40 car blowing up. Caution, Caution. will wave. What Never Kevin done. Harvick wanted to see, but not what Jeff Gordon wanted to see again, because now that will put Jimmy Johnson in fourth position in that 48 car. Not what Steve Letarte wanted to see. Damn, gum. Nothing's going my way today. And, and Daryl, the, the thing about it is those guys that stayed out, they've made their bed now. They're oh, yeah. committed. Yeah. Pack your pit stuff up. Here's another thing that worries me about that 24 car. I don't see any more steam. 
Well, that either means there's no more water. You don't need to run. Sky can shut it off. Or it's cooled Any down. Any blowers, anything you don't need. Every amp jaw hurts them. Ah, uh, wondering about electrical draw. For the fan. Leave the electric fan running. I'm just saying, you know, tire blowers, all that stuff, please. Watch some of this three-wide racing we just had. Desperate men do desperate things. Oh, yeah. With 20 laps to go, here's what you're going to get. It Watch. gets crazy back in here, and they Watch start the using 17 it. coming. They start using that apron like we were talking about. There's Montoya up in there. Now, I think Sterling gets... Yep. No, nah, he didn't hit Montoya, yeah. but he almost got him. Got his nose in there. Boy, Matt had a run. And Matt just had a great run. He was able to clear those guys. Uh-oh. It's back steaming again. Stanley is uh, <laughs> steaming again. <laughs> but, but, but you know what, guys, in their defense, they're, they're doing exactly what they need to be doing. Just stay out there and run the thing. I mean, he, no matter what, he's not going to lose the points lead, maybe even increase his points lead if this thing will get to the end. Heck, yeah, he's got a 200-point lead. It's not about points today. Free pass to Kevin Harvick. Let's see uh, if there's any steam rising down at the Hollywood Hotel. Right, there's always something hot going on down here, uh, Mike. In fact, uh, <laughs> nine top ten finishes for Jeff Gordon this right. year. Part of the reason he is the points leader and has uh, has finished every lap along with Matt Kenseth, the only other driver to do that. That may be in jeopardy the way his car is looking. You were watching Casey Mears' car overheat as well. Yeah, I was watching Casey Mears' car and what happened to him when they came in the pits. They started to put some water in and next thing you know, it wound up, you know, basically breaking the engine right there on pit road. David Streamy had the same issue, but the good thing about it is he's at least still steaming. So that means there's some kind of water still in that engine, and that's the key thing right now. Larry was talking about it, Daryl was talking about it. As long as you're making some steam, that means there's at least some water in there to boil. Well, as Mike said, when it wasn't there for a moment ago, it's like maybe we're out of the water. Well, the thing is that when it cools down, like he keeps saying, he keeps sticking his nose out, even out behind the pace car, trying to get as much cool air to it as possible, and that's going to be what's going to make the difference right now in this 24 car. If he can get on down there toward the end, he might be able to hang on but as Steve Latart's already said, the die's been cast. We've got to let it roll, baby. We're just going to stick out there and run it until it breaks. I mean, you've got the, the Hendrick cars who have dominated the, the new car, NASCAR's car of tomorrow. We're calling the new car. But Ryan Newman right behind him. Dale Earnhardt Jr., what an eventful week that he has had, currently running third, and Jimmy Johnson fourth. But uh, Jr., who uh, started the day with the infraction on the wing, uh, has been up, has been down, is right in the thick of it as we're under caution with 15 laps to go. We've had 10 different leaders, 21 lead changes, and 10 cautions thus far. Quick reminder, next weekend, Major League Baseball on Fox on Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, in high definition. It's a rivalry weekend, Yankees and Mets. Also, White Sox and Cubs, you can check local listings for the game at start time in your area. Remember, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, the pregame show, Jeannie Salasco, Kevin Kennedy with all the baseball news. So, Jeff, uh, let's take a look. If it's not a Hendrick car, we talked about this at the start of the broadcast. Who would it be? Well, right now, you got to believe it. Ryan Newman's in the best place, and then he, followed by Dale Earnhardt Jr., because Ryan's been so good all day long, and he's going to be putting a ton of pressure on Dale, I mean, on G, uh, Jeff Gordon right now. But Dale Earnhardt Jr., I know he wants to win so bad after what happened this week, so he may be driving like a man possessed. And not a single file a restart at this point. Let's re rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Perfect timing for Kevin Harvick. He passed the leader on the last restart to get one of his two laps back. The caution comes out. He's the only car one lap down. He gets the free pass, and Harvick's back on the lead lap again. Made up both laps at one whack. <laughs> that just doesn't seem right, does it? <laughs> well, it's perfect. It's perfect. So Jeff Gordon's your leader. Ryan Newman second. Chevy versus Dodge. Dale Earnhardt Jr. third. Jimmy Johnson, then Matt Kenseth Ford. Marlon Hamlin, Boyer, Edwards, Mark Martin, the top ten. Tony Stewart just one spot away from breaking into the top ten. Jeff Burton right behind him. Martin Truex, Kurt Busch, Greg Biffle. That's your top 15. We're going to restart with 23 lead lap cars and lucky 13 laps to go. You know, Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart have just had a hard time overcoming the problems they've had. Uh, the penalty for Edwards and the uh, problem in the pits for Stewart. But uh, they're both going to make it back to the top 10, look like, as we go green and Jeff Gordon takes off. And he cleared that lap down car of Jeff Green in the 66. Now Ryan Newman will clear him. Still with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jimmy Johnson stacked behind him. Now they'll clear him down the back stretch. Look at Hamlin three wide around Montoya on the inside. Yeah, he's been using that apron and using it well. He passed cars the last restart down on the apron. Just did it again. That baby is coming. 
And Dave Blaney's not going to make the finish of this one. Nope. They've stopped twice to add water, and now Blaney has gone up in smoke in turn three. This 500-mile race has definitely taken a toll on these engines with the heat as well. Yeah, the heat and the radiator problems here. And there's a 48 car by the eight. And if I was Jeff Gordon, I'd be uh, standing on it with both feet because that 48 is coming. This is where you want that 110% now. <laughs> That's right. Don't hold anything back. This is where you want Jimmy Johnson's fresh tires right now. I mean, Jeff Gordon just ran within a tenth and a half of the fastest lap that he's run in this race. He just ran a 30.86. Jimmy Johnson, 30.87, 11 laps to go. Carl Edwards went no way, three wide, no and now Tony Stewart's gone three wide. Yeah, they got bottled up Man. over here, the 14.07, that open the door for Tony to go down on the bottom. And here comes Johnson for second. Here comes a leader, or here comes uh, Jimmy Johnson trying to get around Ryan Newman. And I believe he can do that with those fresh tires. And right now, the best friend that Jeff Gordon has, not his teammate, it's Ryan Newman, that 12 car. 10 to go. I don't know. Jimmy lost a lot of ground right there off of turn two. He had a run on Jim, on the Ryan. He had to back out of it. Tell you what, speaking of runs, right now, Denny Hamlin, that 11 car just shot off turn two. He goes by Dale Earnhardt Jr. He knows the laps are winding down. Still trying to overcome a bad pit stop. It's just kind of like a lot like Phoenix with that 11 car. It's going to be too little, too late. Here goes the 48. He's going to look under the 12. He's got a run on him this time. I believe he can get it done. You get Looking. that right front fender to that left rear quarter panel, you'll make it happen going into turn three, but Newman's not going to give up in that 12 car. you got to have him clear. you got to have him a little bit better run on him than that. you got to have a body. you got to be up with him where if you get into him, it's a body slide. Oh, oh Junior come, got in the wall. Here comes the 11 car. He's going to tighten this little race up. Tell you what, the 24 car's worst nightmare may not be Ryan Newman or Jimmy Johnson. It may Denny, be Denny Hammond if he can get by these two guys. Behind them, Dale Jr. got into the wall. Now, here goes Hamlin. He's going to make it three wide down the Whoa. back. He's got the momentum. He ought to be able to make the pass. Watch him go to the apron. He'll go down on that apron. There he goes. Now, watch him stay down there, get under Newman. I believe he can make the pass. He's got the position. He has taken no prisoners. Seven laps to go. He's got him this time. He will not back off going into turn three or to turn one down here. Hamlin goes by the 12. Now, can he chase down the 24? I don't think he can. Seven laps to go. Newman trying to hold on to third against Johnson. Kenseth closing in and Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart. Big Daddy and the Stanley Steamer are just checking on out. Right now, he's in that clean air. He's no right problem. where he needs to be, Larry. That was the best call he could make. Get me out front, give me clean air. Six to go. And that time, pretty much Jeff Gordon in the 24, Denny Hamlin in the 11, their times mirrored each other. He's about two and three quarter seconds behind the leader. Ford side by side, Kenseth and Carl Edwards coming back toward the front. Fifth place. Let me tell you, nope. I've seen Jeff Gordon when he was on a roll like he is right now. Don't ever bet against him. Reminds me of back in the early uh, 2000s there when he was winning all those races, late 90s. Kenny Wallace got into the wall in turn two. Or excuse me, Johnny Sauter, not Kenny Wallace. And Sauter's going to limp to the pits as this one closes down. Now, guys, that time Denny Hamlin beat Jeff Gordon by almost a half a second that lap, but I just think the laps are going to run out. There'll be four to go when they get back to the strike. The last thing Jeff Gordon wants now, though, is a caution. 11's going to run out of time. And then 24 is going to run out of water, but it's going to be all about the right time for the 24. You saw the interval closing. But with four laps to go, Hamlin would have to be half a second quicker per lap, and he is not. He may, he's making some gains, but it's just, I think Jeff's just being pretty careful right now. And look at Jeff's team, man. I mean, can you imagine that thing sitting there on the pit road, burning up the way it was? And here he is. He's probably going to win this race. He pretty much has clean racetrack in front of him. Worry about that mirror. Three more, you got it, buddy. Three more, you got it. It's not that way, you. There you go. Great advice. Talk to him, Latart. Talk to him.
Yeah, Mike, like you said, he needs about a half a second lap. Right now, all he's getting is about two to three tenths a lap. And Denny Hamlin, who led the most laps today, 179, the most laps by far, and who won the Bush race, may fall a bit short as Jeff Gordon. Oh, Stand and watch behind you, buddy. Two more. You're beating him. Takes two to go. Keep digging, buddy. <laughs> Everybody, keep digging, keep digging. <laughs> you can just turn that on everybody's radio. <laughs> David Gilliland slow in the back straight away. Yeah, he went by here blowing up. A lot of smoke. Boy, Hamlin is going to get so close, but that's just all he's going to be able to do is get close. Carl Edwards has caught Ryan Newman, and that's a battle for fourth place. Good day for Carl after uh, having that drive through penalty. A lot of smoke for Gilliland, but no caution. White, White flag. flag in the air. One to go. One more, buddy. Oh, man. Can you just. I, Denny Hamlin said there. He's so close. Why couldn't there be five more laps? I mean, he is closing ever so fast, but it's just not going to be enough. He's going to be there, but that's it. He's going to run out of time. Stanley Steamer running just fine. Yes, gonna make it to the much. finish look at line. Look at that thing coming across. Look at the steaming, still steaming. Jeff Gordon and the DuPont Chevrolet win at Darlington. <laughs> Hamlin second, Johnson third, and Newman holds off Carl Edwards for fourth by two car lengths. What a drive by Tony Stewart to get back to sixth. And look at Jeff Burton, who pretty much was just Never barely. Give up, man. Never give up. It's exactly right. Never give up. But Jeff Burton, who fought all day long to get back to the top ten. That's the man right there. I tell you, I love that guy. He is on it. It is Jeff Gordon's seventh Darlington victory. His fourth straight top three finish here. His third win of 2007 and make that three out of the last four races. And you know what? I, there was a time when I didn't know if Steve Latard and, and Jeff would ever be on the same page. But man, now that they are, whoa, 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 be under everybody else. She's still steaming. I like <laughs> I got to figure that out. I never saw a car steam like that and finish a race. That thing's been doing that, Larry, for the last 40, 50 laps. Like you said, as long as it's steaming, it's still got water in it. That's a good thing. You don't see that very often. Smoke coming out of the tires and the radiator all at the same time. In five NASCAR races with the new car, the Impala, Jeff has finished in the top four in every one of them as he scores his 78th career next Tell Cup victory. And you know what? An attaboy to our fans here at Darlington. Not only did they weather the storm last night, they're role models for our fans at Phoenix and Talladega. Jeff Gordon will steam his way to victory lane, and so will we right after this. So easy to turn. So easy to handle. It almost drives itself. But it's not just about mowing the lawn. It's also about owning a John Deere. Easy Track, the newest John Deere. Want to see something juicy? How's this? Right now at Applebee's, it's steak time. Where you can dive into our new juicy New York strip steak. A thick center cut sirloin topped with sauteed mushrooms and served with garlic mashed potatoes and grilled asparagus. The new New York strip steak, only at Applebee's. Can't stay for dinner? Pick it up and take it home. Things you can do with one finger. Amuse a baby. Declare your team's supremacy. Prove your sobriety. Make toast. Identify a murderer. Get to know your doctor. Save Holland. Don't call me stuff. Reallocate your entire investment portfolio with E-Trade and get free independent research. 